they compete today. I ask you to watch over the fans, give them a great day, keep them, help them travel safe to and from the track. I ask that your peace and your presence would be upon us all, that truly that God would bless America. It's in your name I pray, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome former Nashville recording artist and Charlotte native, Colby Sherwood Bell. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Let's hear it. This is Charlotte Motor Speedway on Memorial Day weekend 2016. Few places honor our military the way CMS can. We go racing on FS1 next. The start of NASCAR's Marathon Weekend begins right now. Eric Jones on the pole. We'll find out in 200 laps and 300 miles who will be in victory lane. FS1 presents the Hisense 4K TV 300 from 
Charlotte Motor Speedway. The forecast today, picture perfect. Guys in the booth, Adam Alexander, Clint Boyer, Michael Walter. Boys, by our count, Larry said the drinking word of the day was hot and slick. We said it nine times already. I think it'll continue upstairs. <laughs> that, that's perfect, Danielle, because that's exactly where I was going. You, you just came off the track, final practice. It is hot. It is slick. How do you manage 300 miles at this place, Clint? You know, and I think it's slicker than even I anticipated today. You know going in it's going to be hot and slick, and this place is always notorious for that. But these Cup guys that have already been in these cars, they've got a little bit of advantage here. These guys need to be ready. As an Xfinity regular, I'm telling you, she's slick. And then the thing that's crazy, during qualifying, when the tires are new and these cars have all the downforce on them, they were slipping and sliding then. So I can't wait to watch these guys go two, three wide in the corners, and I know the advantage has to swing over to the experienced cup guys, like you said, Clint, but I don't know how they're going to beat Daniel Suarez or Eric Jones. Those two guys were fast in practice. They have fast cars in qualifying. It's going to be fun to watch youth overcome these veterans. I think it's going to happen today. You wearing that orange tie to support Suarez? Is that what that's all about? I've been a big fan <laughs> of that young man and the job he's done behind the wheel, and if he got to victory lane, it'd make me smile. Hey, one of his favorite teammates not here today, Kyle Busch. He's won eight times at this place, four times this year, so who becomes the favorite with KB sitting in the motorhome this afternoon. Man, I like Daniel Suarez. He's done a great job all season long, but I'm just glad as somebody that's coming in and stepping in that Kyle's not here because I <laughs> get tired of talking about Kyle. Well, the thing that's cool is Denny Hamlin told me earlier today, he said, I'm not good at these Xfinity races. I look, he's won three of the last seven starts. How does he make that statement? That's He'll a be good there. Average. And, and don't forget about Austin Dillon because one year ago here, he was on the pole, led 163 laps. If it's not a drive Driver from Joe Gibbs Racing, it could be RCR and driver number two. Yeah, he's solid, as was Brandon Jones. Let's look for that kid to be well, be good as well. And we'll find out who's going to get it done shortly. It's time now to go trackside and get the command to fire engines. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshals, the Boys and Girls Club of Cabarrus County. Drive start your engines! Xfinity Series teams had a weekend off. That means they are chomping at the bit to get it going. A home game from Charlotte Motor Speedway. We go green next.
gorgeous Saturday afternoon, Charlotte Motor Speedway. We are set for the 11th race of the year. The Hisense 4K TV 300, 69th time Xfinity teams have competed here in NASCAR's backyard. Let's go from the driver's seat here from Ryan Blaney. That's a good idea there, Adam. Hey, Ryan Blaney, it's Mike up in the FS1 booth. Can you talk for a bit, bud? Yeah, Mike, go ahead. All right, I'm just wondering, these cars were dancing around and qualifying. The track is slick. I know you're looking forward to this task, but how do you race to the front from the 13th starting spot? Well, I think uh, with it being hot like this, it's just going to make the racetrack a lot more maneuverable. We're going to be able to move from the bottom to the top and everywhere in between. And I think that's really going to make for a good race. So, And I think we also have a good snap on board Mustang today. It definitely doesn't show uh, where we qualified to where we should be. So hopefully we'll be able to, to make our way up there. If not, uh, it's a long race. Greg Irwin and, and everyone on the 12 team will get me fixed up, but hopefully the fans enjoy it. I know I will. Hey, Ryan, it's Boyer up here in the booth. Uh, man, obviously you got the right tools to have a snap on on the side of that hot rod. Uh, you know, I think it's just the same thing. Both you and I were out there on the racetrack. It was a lot slicker than I even, you know, was anticipating. Obviously, you know it's going to be slick, but do you think having less horsepower on these Xfinity cars, you can make it around that outside and make that work? Yeah, hey, Clint. Yeah, it was definitely slick out there. And the second practice for the cup cars was definitely a handful. I don't think anybody was happy with their race cars. So uh, there's little things we can take away from that. These expanded cars, they roll around the top pretty good if, if it's handling right. So uh, I worked it in a little bit in my cup car and, and have a few tricks that hopefully I can carry over to this. But uh, like I said, if we be able to move up, move around, like I think we're going to, it should make it a lot of fun for everybody. All right, buddy, we're looking forward to watching it. Put on a show. Thanks, guys. Four career wins for Ryan Blaney, starting 13th today. And now everything you need to know in 60 seconds. Put a minute on the clock. Pit headlines. Chris Neville, you are up first. Well, hey, Adam. Ty Dillon, he's still looking for his first win in 2016. And he's finished in the top three four times here at uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. But he was quickest in final practice. That team, they've been rolling in lots of updates to all of their cars over the last month. That all coming together here at Charlotte. And the hot and slick racetrack, well, Ty Dillon, he's going to need all of those tools today. Jamie Little. Well, Daniel Suarez has finished in the top 10 in all but one race this year. He has tremendous speed, but he has yet to get that win. He told me earlier to win here in NASCAR's backyard would be quite special, followed by a huge party tonight. Keep your eye on the 19. He's starting on the front row once again. Vince Welch. 19-year-old Eric Jones is going for his third win in the last five races, but if the 20 is to get that win today, they need a cleaner race than they've had at times this season. Penalties at Atlanta, Vegas, and Texas have hindered them. If they have a clean race, well, they've already got the track position with the pole. They've got the top pit stall, a clean race, execution. They could be in victory lane at the end. And you think about his success last year, Vince, both of his victories coming at mile-and-a-half tracks. And now we take a closer look at the numbers for Austin Dillon all time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, racing like a champion, brought to you by Just For Men, Mustache and Beard. Won the title in 2013, seven career victories, five of those coming at mile and a half venues, got the sweep here one season ago. And wow, was he impressive a year ago right here. And you can carry that over, it is slicker now. And by the way, if you're playing the drinking game at home of hot and slick, you better quit. You how gotta many stop is now. Yes. I think we've over allotted uh, how many times we should say that. We just want people to know how challenging this is. I'm talking 185 miles an hour in the corner, and this thing feels like you're at a dirt track. And it's age, you know. Let's face it. It's we're, we're several years into this repave. This thing is starting to slick off. Uh, you know, I said to Ryan a little bit ago. I couldn't believe how much slicker it is. It's starting to have a little character. It's getting bumpy down into turn three and a little bit into one. Uh, these are all things that help promote a, a good race and I think we're going to see it today. A battle of the uh, organizations. That's right. I don't know what's more impressive. 185 miles per hour, 139 track temp. You know, you put, both of them over the century mark. Put those two together. <laughs> we're, in, say, yeah. we're in for a heck of a show. Definitely the combination of the two. I'm pacing the field today, the Toyota Camry XSE. And a couple of Toyotas right behind him on the front row. Thank you very much for all the hard work all weekend long. We have a really, really fun race car and we all know that. So let's try to get advantage of that and the most important thing is have some fun. Thank you guys. Time to make it happen. Hey. 
Adam, everybody else knows that too. <laughs> you walk through the Xfinity garage, they're all talking about the speed of the 19. But Clint, you know how challenging restarts and starts in general are now in this yes. series. And the, we've got to see this kid master the starts today. And here's the first chance for him to do it here. And I tell you, this track more than any other, for whatever reason, it's hard to get a hold of that outside line. It's going to be interesting to see how Daniel can do here on this start. It's very, very slick getting up through the gearbox. Three races this season, now four at mile and a half tracks, and every one of them, Joe Gibbs Racing has qualified one, two, three. On the pole for the fourth time in 2016, Eric Jones chooses the inside lane. Put the green flag in the air and let him race in the high sense. 4K TV 300 at Charlotte. And you can see him there definitely spinning the tires with also getting a big run there. Already three wide. Boy, you called that, Clint. That 19 car was fishtailing across the start-finish line. So let's just mark down on the first start, Suarez wasn't able to maintain his position. If he's going to win this race, he's going to have to get better throughout today. Front row to sixth. We go back and look at the restart right side of the screen. Yeah, you can see it fishtailing on him there. You just got to realize the other thing that's hard there is you can't go until you see the inside car go. So you're already a step behind him anyway. Now you're trying to get on it a little bit harder to get caught up. Once that baby breaks loose, you're in trouble. And it, this isn't like your passenger car at a stoplight. These guys have to squeeze that throttle down at them. They've got to really feed at the gas slowly in order not to spin the tires. And uh, that was a great example of what happens when you get on it too soon. Saw Suarez trying to rally back in the outside lane. Nice battle here. Ooh. Ryan Blaney almost contact with Ty Dillon in the three. And that's Cole Custer in the black 88. Ryan Reed in the 16 moving into your picture. Good move by Reed down on the bottom. Blaney's going to try to rebound on the high side using that momentum from the outer lane. Quite the sense of urgency at the start of this race. Yeah, there is. I mean, it, you got to go, you know, and, and it's it's this is the best opportunity to make up time. It's so hard to pass once you get strung out on these bigger racetracks. Um, the tires are coming up. And again, let me tell you, this place is like I said, it's slicker than even I anticipated today um, with the heat and stuff like that. So some of these guys <laughs> they got their hands full. I can promise you. And we heard Blaney say he thought he learned some things during the course of the sprint cup practice this morning that would help him. He could lean on those tricks. And I believe Adam, what he's basically talking about and Clint is just where he could run on the track right out next to the wall where there might be a little bit of extra grip. Yeah, and the other side of that is is the character I was talking about. It is rough getting into one up there. You've got to kind of go around that. If you get to driving over that, that they can hop over them bumps and slide up and get you in the fence pretty quick if you're not careful. On board with Bubba Wallace. To his inside, Justin Allgaier in front of him. Rookie of the Year contender Brandon Jones. Brennan Poole in that mix. Good racing all around this mile and a half. Four laps into the 200 that make up this afternoon's 300 miler. You know what I love? You don't have to tiptoe as much as you'd think. As slick as it is and as fast as these guys are going, we're four laps in. Look at Bubba. All the way out next to the outside wall. We know there's multiple grooves and different lanes, and these guys are already taking advantage of them. How much experimenting early in the race, flirting with different lines, trying to figure out where you're going to get the payoff in the second half? Well, I mean, this early in the race, you're racing. You know what I mean? Once you get strung out a little bit, you can start experiencing. You'll spot her in your ear. I'll tell you, all right, you got a little bit of time there. You can, uh, we got some problems with Elliot here. Let's listen in. Yeah, it's a serious wrong here. I don't know what's going on. If I got a flat or what's going on. Well, he's stabilized in the seventh spot, and that might tell you a little bit about how challenging this track is today. He thinks he's got a flat running in seventh. He's not ventured off that bottom line. He's kept that one main car right on the white line in the turns. This team has been so consistent in 2016. Only one finish outside the top 10, and they got that win at Talladega. There's a chase in the Xfinity Series in 2016. That means he's going to be in the playoffs come September. So if they have a problem today, not a huge concern, but you always want to run good here. We'll keep our eye on Elliott Sadler. Yeah, you want to run good at the mile and a half because there's so many of them, Adam, and you don't want to have a chance to test and learn and go out there and be, oh, whoa! That was a huge all wiggle. Good, all good. Outside corner, you're clear. I he and Allgaier both lost momentum I was there. It must have took air off of Allgaier when he went across the back of him, too, because you could see he was having trouble as well. Did he, he might, get in the fence there? Might have made contact with the seven car. That was a wild 
slide for the 33. Tucked down on the bottom of the racetrack. Ooh. Yeah, he, oh, he did clip him. Oh, and the seven did get in the outside wall. Yeah. See him scrubbing along there. Let's ride along with Ryan Blaney. Well, that's a good drive. Got got all clear, all good. That could have been a lot worse than it was for both of those cars. They both did a great job of, of holding on to those cars for minimal damage. And an interesting thing there, this 33 of Jones, he was down on the bottom of the track and Algar was plenty high. It wasn't like side drafting. He just got loose right oh, on the yeah. bottom and, and slid up himself. the hill. Yeah, and that's easy to do. You know, these guys haven't had a chance to work on their cars. I told you, this thing is slick. It's a lot slicker than it looks. I can promise you that. Taking advantage, saw the four car of Ross Chastain, who's now in the top 15. Ryan Blaney from 13th to 9th. At the front, it's all about Eric Jones. He's led every lap so far here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway, caution coming out just as we return from break. Problems for the 15, Cody Ware. We've, we've talked about how loose the cars are. We've seen great examples of that. Be interesting to see exactly how. And it happened so recently that we haven't even seen what happened. We, it looks to me like from his black marks, he spun and got into the inside wall, but we're gonna have to find a replay here for us. Mike Harmon gets the free pass on this, our first caution. And just before the yellow flag went in the air for the first time today, Denny Hamlin able to drive around his teammate, Eric Jones. Our leaders were mixing it up. Clint, I know what you want as a driver. It's just a few laps into this, baby. Give me tires, right? But these guys, they don't have, they don't quite have that option. The tires are limited on how many they can get throughout the day. Well, and that's what creates environment within the race, right? I mean, you've got a, you've got cars that are going to take tires that stay out or something like that and shake things up, and that's what's fun to call. Is it too early with five sets for the race in the pit area, Larry? There lies the key. They only have five sets laying in the pit area. Now, if you're way in the back and your car's not driving very well, I think about Jeb Burton, who actually ended up crashing, qualifying, spinning through the infield grass. Maybe so, but up front, you'd love to come but there's only five sets in the pits. And I love that. I mean, I love that the crew chiefs are really put to the challenge of figuring out how to use those tires most effectively. And then the drivers have to hear, you're gonna stay out on those old tires. We don't wanna come yet. I don't think anyone's surprised that uh, Denny Hamlin's got the lead, the 18 car, so good this season. Here's how he did it. 
Yeah, you can see he was starting to catch him, but, uh, you know, Eric actually moved up and took his line right there, and then Denny was strong enough to just go on the bottom and, and make the pass. But uh, it's it's definitely a battle of those Gibbs cars right now. But Eric's going to – he was hoping that it would go a little bit longer so you could come in and make an adjustment there and get some tires. But, you know, time will tell here. We're going to see if they, if they decide to stop or not. I believe most of our front runners, like our expert crew chief, Larry McReynolds, said will stay out. But it looks like 20 laps up close to it. You see a lot of these top teams hopping up on the wall. <laughs> this is that one moment that I always laugh at. You know, it's hard. It's a, as, as, you know, sitting here calling a race on TV, I'm not saying a word. I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> you can't screw it up if you right, don't say anything. That's right. right. Well, I, I will say this. I know you want tires. That's Absolutely. What, that, that would be your vote. Let's get a word for Denny Hamlin here on the radio. Denny, this is right at the, this is right at the window. I think we're still closed here. We're going to drag everybody down with us and see it when it opens. Seems to be okay. I'm maybe a little bit free, but not bad. Chris, here they are. And Kyle Larson back in the Xfinity Series. First time we've seen him since Bristol. He led 94 laps that day, almost won the race. Right now, early in this race, he's saying that car a little bit loose on entry, can't quite charge the corner, and then getting off the corner just way too loose. So looking for adjustments here. Jamie? And Denny Hamlin, very impressive so far. His first Xfinity Series race this year. You heard him say there, the car's staying pretty steady. Four-tire stop in the 22, four-tire stop. No adjustments, Ben. Pole winner Eric Jones, bottom right of your screen. Oh, he was happy to see that yellow because his car was so loose. He said he felt like he was going to wreck every time he went through the corner. Four tires and chassis adjustments to tighten it up. Ooh. And the pit crews doing their job. Denny Hamlin came in with the race lead, exits the same. Jones, Larson, Logano behind him. Cody Ware bringing out the caution for the first time today here at Charlotte. Under caution, 18 laps in here at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Our four performance track facts. Roush Fenway, the all-time leader when it comes to victories at this place in Xfinity competition. 12 times they've gone to victory lane. A lot of those courtesy of Hall of Famer Mark Martin, who will join us on NASCAR Race Hub this week, by the way. He'll be on Tuesday's program. And I don't think of pit road being a challenging place here, but boy, it was congested under caution. So many cars on the lead lap, though, Adam, and they all come in on different agendas. And watching this area right here, as the cars begin to exit, 
you can see they're pulling out and there's going to be traffic and contact a lot right. of traffic yeah look the 33 those are the 33 of Brandon Jones ran into Cole Custer. He hung into Blaney, and a couple of cars that had to come back to pit road. Look at this. Wait, all clear. All the way out the grass. All the way out the grass. All the way out the grass. Among all those green. that came back down, Cole Custer, who was 10th when the yeah. caution came out. Yeah, he was definitely the, the meat in the middle of the sandwich there and, and certainly resulted in him having to come back in. But it's early in a race, only 18 laps of a 200-lap race. I was smart to come in and make sure everything's back up and we're ready. We'll go back green as we... Complete lap 19, and as we do so, the Toyota Camry XSC 2016 model will pull to pit lane and put the field back in the hands of Denny Hamlin. Hamlin's in the lower lane. Like Clint said, the outside just seems to be harder to get a hold of. Let's see if Jones can do a good job. And look back on row three. That's Daniel Suarez losing ground again. To the outside is Blaney. We've got to get these starts down if we're going to win a race. Holds Pens off Blaney, though. Penske cars have looked good early today. Logano in the top five. Blaney gaining ground. Yeah, you know this Kyle Larson's going to give it your all on a restart like that. There's already the on the outside. This is, uh, this is the time to go. you got to get clean air. Certainly he's marched up there and got in position and right on Denny Hamlin. He hasn't been running in the Xfinity Series lately talking about Kyle Larson, but his confidence is up because he's been knocking on the door when it comes to Sprint Cup competition. And there's Elliott Sadler, finds himself sixth. What's the story with him, Chris? Well, Adam, we heard Elliott Sadler in those opening laps talking about possibly having a tire go down. Well, he stayed out on the racetrack and the team told him that your times look good, so stay out. And Elliott was just saying that the car didn't feel anything like it did over the course of the week in practice here. He said the front end just felt really numb. So on that last pit stop, team looked at the tires. Tires look fine. They did make some big adjustments to the track bar and air pressure on that car. So Elliott Sander, at least he's got a good car right now. Caution might have been a really good thing for him. Justin Allgaier underneath Brandon Jones. Right behind him, J.J. Yaley, who's been doing a great job driving that 44 for TriStar Motorsports. And behind Yaley, you see Ross Chastain. That's a good, another good run for the four car. Dives down to the bottom of the racetrack right in front of Ty Dillon. Made Dillon, Dillon slide up the track, and Brendan Poole's all over the back of him. Poole does a great job. Almost won the race over at Talladega. Had a chance at Richmond late in the going to win there, too, and finds himself competitive here again in Charlotte. Love that camo paint scheme on the DC Solar Chevrolet. Thinking about our troops on this Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, he's certain. I was watching him that first run. He's he's not scared. He was high, wide, <laughs> and handsome right on the wall. Um, it's fun to watch it. You know, it's something that I have noticed. You know, it seems like in our cup practice, you could run that you know, middle line a little bit better than they seem to be able to in these Xfinity cars. But I think they'll wander around. As yeah. the bottom lane gets maybe some more rubber down on it, they'll move to the middle, and, and we know the top's going to be available. But right now, those Gibbs cars are just so strong, along with Kyle Larson, they're able to hook it to the bottom. It's hard to pass a car that's working perfect down on the bottom. Hamlin not totally running away from Larson and Eric Jones. Advantage at the line, a half a second. And you're, there you see Suarez, he's back in the fifth spot and he's all over Joey Logano as Denny Ham, or excuse me, as Eric Jones goes around Kyle Larson. Larson looks like he might have an issue, maybe just trying to break the draft off the guys from behind, but he's lost a lot of ground. Oh, Jones sliding oh. sideways into the wall on turn four. Up there. Oh, and there's no Suarez. There's a minute behind you. Oh, yeah, no. oil on the track. Let me see. Oh, damage for Sadler as well. Right sided. Yeah, split the. <sighs> you heard it on the radio. We were getting a report of fluid on the track. Yeah, right before. I, I, as I reckon, I glanced down and saw the 14 car right there pull in, and I got the hood up. I'd say yeah. you might be right. Jeff Green, maybe lost some oil, but there's definitely issues down there and looks like it probably came from the 14 car. Some good drivers paying the price. That's just such a shocker when you do, you got a car as good as Eric Jones, you dive in there and it just jumps out from underneath of you and then Suarez in the wrong place as well. Watch him battle this car, just trying to hang on to it.
Elliot Sadler with nowhere to go. Let's go on board with Ryan Blaney, see what kind of view he had. One of the walls there, stay low, stay low, keep coming, everything's good. Check up, check up. Check up, stay low, watch him, watch him, check up, check up. Come on, all right, just check up. We've got to slow your speed down here. We'll get our spot back, just maintain your speed. Oh, we got sideways. Just maintain your speed. I don't know if you got a problem down bottom here or what. I'll be ready. Oh. Oh, right in the wall. Keep it up there. Keep it up there. I guess oil on the track. Let me see. You know, you can almost see it, I think, right there in that middle to three quarter mark on, the, on up the racetrack, hitting in that three there. Daniel Suarez on pit road, a lot of damage. Did you hit the ball there? Yeah, it was something, it was oil or something. 74 come down through here missing a little bit, but we never saw any smoke from him. I almost felt like that Denny Hamlin had backed out of it a little bit. Do you uh, think he felt it and sensed that something was happening? Possibly because we saw Larson take a whole different line into mm -hmm. that corner. Maybe they saw, like Clint said, it was shiny down there. Maybe those guys spotted it. How bad is it for Elliott Sadler, Chris? Well, tough break for Elliott Sadler. Boy, he's just had a great season of consistency. Nine top ten finishes. Just kind of got caught up in there with uh, the 19 car of Denny, uh, Daniel Suarez. The good thing is, is he says he has uh, water pressure in that race car. Just has a split in the bodywork right above the splitter. Vince? Well, the 20 of Eric Jones hasn't come to pit road yet, but he's going to be arriving here shortly. Says his steering is off about five degrees to the left. That's one of the things that's going to have to be addressed as they look at the toe and the damage on that right side, the right front, and particularly heavy damage on the right rear of the 20. So they're talking about addressing it in stages here. Initially going to check the body damage and do as much repair to it before they bring him back in and uh, and and address the toe issue. So look for the body damage to be corrected first, out and then back in and then address the toe. Three drivers involved. Eric Jones, who was running second. Daniel Suarez, who was fifth. Elliot Sadler, sixth at the time of caution. And Denny Hamlin, the race leader, able to avoid the issues. It's right in the middle lane of three and four, right at the seam, they, they can't miss it. Right at the seam, right in the middle of the racetrack and left of my left side tires. You can see the streak. So he kind of knew it was there, Jamie. Well, that's what he said right afterwards. But the team just asked him, so did you see the oil and you backed off? And he said, actually, no, I didn't see anything at first. I thought I blew a tire, so I backed out. And when I did that, that's when I noticed the oil. So it was kind of a lucky break for the 18. It seemed like he was moved down, too. Did you notice that, like, for whatever yeah. reason, he was a lot lower than everybody else was getting in, and it's, I think that's what led him to go through it and everybody else have trouble because ev everybody moved up to get, you know, go around him, and then they wrecked, let's and he if, didn't. Let's see if Ryan Blaney might be able to tip us on on, on what it looked like out there. Yeah. Hey, Blaney, it's Michael. Uh, did you see that oil? Is that how you were able to avoid it or uh, just in the right place at the right time? Hey, Michael. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, I saw the, the leaders slip in one and two, and uh, I saw it a little bit going down the back straightaway, and in the three, it was really shiny, and uh, we just went really low. Luckily, we were able to, to not hit it and, uh, and wreck ourselves. I feel bad for the people that got in it. Uh, it was hard to see initially, but um, hopefully we'll get it cleaned up and get back racing. What do you think about that snap-on car so far? Is it, you got something to go up there and race those Toyotas with? I really do. I think so. Uh, the first run, I thought we were fairly good. Uh, once we got going a little bit, strung out, I thought our car was was a very strong long-run car. We just need a little bit more laps there. That that restart to get going, and then I think that's when we really shine. So, I uh, I'm up for long runs, and then who knows? We might uh, might have something for the guys up there. Okay, man, thanks for the report. We'll check in with you later. Daniel Suarez now 36, one lap down. Jones and Sadler still on track and on the lead lap. Denny Hamlin, the race leader, under caution.
Denny Hamlin, Eric Jones hosted a NASCAR field day at the Boys and Girls Club of Cabarrus County here in North Carolina. Denny and Eric spoke with the kids about the technology and teamwork that goes on behind the scenes in NASCAR. They interacted with the kids, signed autographs, while Hisense made an equipment donation to the Boys and Girls Club. Some of those kids out here today for the Hisense 4K TV 300. It's Charlotte Motor Speedway, and we're glad you're with us as well under caution for the second time today. A lot of fluid around this track, a long cleanup, and let's take a look and see exactly how this went down. You can see, guys, Blaney diving to the bottom like he told us there on his in-car um, transaction, and then you saw also the same thing with, with Kyle Larson. Larson. They, yep. they knew there was oil on the track, and uh, Suarez didn't spot it, nor did Jones. But when Jones drove by Larson like he did and got second and was closing on Denny, I mean, I never doubt Eric Jones or the 20 car, but I thought this is way too good to be true. And then everybody started spinning. Well, in his defense, he was right on the 42 of Kyle Larson. So he didn't yeah. have the vantage point that Kyle had. Mm -hmm. And then Kyle suddenly changed lanes to avoid the oil leaving Jones out there on his own. And you don't want to pick on these young drivers, but you know, a little of experience went a long ways there. Denny and, and Kyle Larson both recognized it was a little bit of an issue with the handling of the cars and got out of Dodge. And them, them young drivers just kind of unfortunately drove up into it, but that's hard to tell. You know, you've got a guy that you see goes to the bottom, you're trying to figure out what he's doing, and then all of a sudden, oh, oh no, that's what he was doing. All these guys have been to pit road. Suarez back out 34th one lap down. Jones is 35th, one lap down to the race leader, and they're, they're not the first couple in that category. So if they've got the damage fixed well enough, they might be able to battle for a free pass position. We'll wait and see. Jamie? And you see there a very taped up splitter on the 19 car. It is actually broken in half on that left front area. They've worked on it multiple times in the pits. And what happened is when he spun, that left front hit the wall. Well, he collected a bunch of paint, yellow paint stuck in the hub. You see it right there. That's all from scraping the wall, and that's where he sustained the most damage. So they're hoping they've got it all together. Remember, he was second in points coming in. They need to salvage every point possible, Vince. And for Eric Jones, he came in. They were repairing the car, still trying to stay on the lead lap, but they would send them out each time the uh, pack was coming around. But they had a crewman underneath the car. They couldn't get him out in time, so they ended up having to just stay in the pit box to continue to repair the damage to this car. So they fell down a lap, and Eric said, unfortunately, he said what they did to repair it made it worse. The steering wheel now 90 degrees to the left. So they're going to bring him back in. He's in the box now. You see they're going to lengthen the tie rod there. They also didn't get the tires changed on the last stop like they wanted to. So just trying to make sure they get everything uh, done appropriately so that car is something that Eric Jones can handle once he does get back out and the racing resumes. And despite the fact he's won a couple of times this year, Eric Jones has had his fair share of problems. For Daniel Suarez, not so much. One finish outside the top 10 in the last 16 races.
Baseball Night in America returns tonight as some of the best players and teams hit the field. You could get the Dodgers and the Mets, perhaps the Cardinals and Nationals. Interleague play has the Pirates taking on the Rangers. It's all tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time on your local Fox station. You can watch it all. Fox Sports Go, 7 tonight. Your Royals didn't make the, the reel tonight, Clint. Boy, we're struggling. We're hurt. Everybody's hurt. My you, buddy Moose. Man, that's a uh, season-ending injury there. And Gordon's hurt. We're all hurt. Got to get him back. But you got on that Royals tie. And, and Royals colors today for Brennan Poole. So I try to move around, run the top, try to figure some stuff out. You know, if you want to direct me a little bit on some stuff when you see, like, I could make a move. You know, maybe hold me back some or, you know, make sure I go to the bottom. I've gone to the top sometimes. I just, like, hang myself, you know, and lost spots. Yeah, it's tough. You know, I mean, that's that's exactly right. And it's so hard to tiptoe around that outside like that. You know, Sounds it's frustrated. It's interesting, too, that the kid is smart enough to lean on his spotter, you know, and lean on the folks that, that have a better view than he does to say, give me some direction. Let me know how I can get out of these binds I find myself in. Little recap here if you're just joining us on this Saturday afternoon under caution for the second time. First caution of the day was for Cody Ware. The second had some fluid on the track. Eric Jones running in the runner up position, got into it. Suarez spun around. So did Elliott Sadler. They were all inside the top 10, and all three have made several trips down pit road, Chris. Adam, I think this is Elliott Sadler's fifth or sixth time in. He's still on the lead lap, but they've done a great job repairing the nose of that car. There was a, a big split uh, right underneath uh, that radiator opening, so they fixed that. They actually had to run back to the truck to get more bear bond. The front end of that car had has so much tape on it trying to hold everything together. And the last thing they're doing right now is just trying to get a, a screen in front of that radiator. And Chris, when you give a team like this this much time That's under right. caution, they're going to get that baby fixed. It's unfortunate to get caught up and get tore up like that, but it is fortunate that we have so much oil on the track and it's taking a long time to get cleaned up because these boys, they're working hard and they're, they're going to make something out of this. We don't normally get three wide under caution, but these drivers all feel like they have the other driver's position and we can't open pit road till we get everyone lined up properly. So a lot of conversations going on right now about who's where. And to your point, Michael, good for Elliot Sadler because he can keep making those pit stops and unofficially the count now for driver one, seven get trips the 12, down the road. Out of line to get him in behind the four. Drivers are hard-headed sometimes, <laughs> by the way. Just a footnote. Maintained A speed. If you want us to haul ass down pit road, I can do that and come out first. That is BS. You have to feel the frozen. Feel is frozen just like Talladega. Yeah, ten four. I agree with I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. We what? saw we saw Blaney dive down pit road. Uh, to miss the accident, which is exactly the smart thing to do there. There were cars spinning ahead of him, and I think that's what's caused the issue. Some other cars went with him, and now the drivers are trying to sort out who was where. Right. Now, the rule is simply in the driver's meeting, you're told once you come to pit road, reduce your speed all the way down. Yep. Now, does that mean go from 170 down to like 150? Is that fine? That's or a reduction. That is a re <laughs> that's exactly what the rule states, and that's exactly <laughs> what that is. And I think that's why they're having issues trying to figure it out. I don't. I guess maybe some gas here, but darn, they're not going to take tires. But one thing to clean up, you don't freeze the field. You go back to the last scoring loop under a caution. We, we froze the field at Talladega because it was the final lap. So just so everybody that under, at home understands exactly what we're talking about here. Is that Ryan Reed at pit road along yeah. with Ty Dillon? Ty some Dillon. Some of the guys in the back half of the top 15. Cole Custer, Garrett Smithley. We will follow up on what they do along the pit lane. We know Custer had some damage on the on the on a pit stop earlier. Dylan just a little gas along with uh, Ryan Reed. You know, guys, I don't know how they would do it, but I, I go to these dirt races, you know, watch my dirt teams race, and they have a, a, a race receiver. You know, all these short tracks do across the country, and, and actually the tower talks to you. You know, instead of relaying through the spotter, through the crew chief, through everything else, they say 15 behind the 10 or whatever, you know. It would be nice to be able to figure that out where they could just yell at you instead of yelling at your spotter and telling him to yell at you. You more apt to listen to your spotter or race control? Is that driver. guy that says official on his back. <laughs>
Uh, back after a break on FS1. One of the toughest parts of racing here in Charlotte is, is the weather. Hot, cold, sun, no sun. Uh, all of those details affect this racetrack probably more so than anywhere else we go to on the circuit. The toughest part about conquering Charlotte is probably the amount of laps here I have right now. Really don't have any laps, so I really don't know what to expect. It's all about keeping up with the racetrack, making sure that you understand the conditions. <laughs> all, all kinds of challenges here today. <laughs> I really like Ryan Priest's answer. It was perfect. Yeah, and he's fought his way to a top 20 spot so far, so Get what you don't out. know don't, won't hurt you sometimes. Let's listen in. If on. I go down pit road to miss a wreck and I maintain speed in a caution zone, wherever I'm at is where I'm supposed to be. I do not disagree with that. I agree with you 100%. And a lot of times that's the best thing to do with the driver because he's a little bit uptight about what just happened. But the rule is pretty simple. When you come to pit road, you just reduce your speed as, as you travel down pit road. And in this case, Adam, in the middle of the race, it's just a caution. It goes back to the last scoring loop you passed. So it doesn't matter what really happens after you get to pit road and you that's slow right. down, as long as you do slow down. It's wherever you were on that last scoring loop. We showed some guys coming to pit road prior to the break. Ty Dillon, Ryan Reed, Cole Custer. And a lap later, Austin Dillon came down. I don't, I don't know what they're thinking here, but, but those guys that pitted on this last time around, they would be in a situation where they could do it on two more stops when you fuel look at the, the fuel window. In just six days, some of the world's biggest soccer stars converge on the United States for the 100th anniversary of the Copa America. It all starts as USA takes on Columbia Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern on FS1. Or you can watch the entire tournament live on Fox Sports Go. Going to be playing at Levi's Stadium out in Santa Clara, California. Hosted Super Bowl 50. Columbia comes in ranked fourth. United States just inside the top 30. Well, we're finally ready for the restart. And a number of different things to watch here. The guys that we talked about that just pitted, Ty Dillon, He's 22nd. He's the best of those guys that just came down pit road. Elliott Sadler on the lead lap will restart 32nd. 
And they're all back behind our 2016 Toyota Camry XSE pace car. And for the first time today, when the pace car looks out his rearview mirror, he doesn't see two Toyotas right <laughs> behind him. Four. And he doesn't see the leader on the inside lane, Denny Hamlin choosing the outside lane on the restart here. Interesting call. Could that have anything to do, Clint, with the speedy drive? Maybe Denny didn't want to run through that as he got to one? I'd say that's certainly what it is. And Kyle likes that outside. <laughs> you keep him pinned down where he don't want to be. Outside lane seemed to work just fine. Thank you very much. I think Clint nailed that. You know, when you're the pole sitter, you can start feeding that gas before the other guy. He has to react to that. And sometimes even the best in the world get their tires to spinning when they're put in that situation. Four wide back there, boys. Jeb Burton making some gains in the 43. Blake Cook running up inside the top 10. Larson able to get around Allgaier for second. Here comes Ryan Blaney for third. You can see Larson just doesn't go or tries to and his tire spin gives a big run of momentum to that outside lane and that inside bunch of guys are just stuck. If you're sitting there running the same speed as him and you're waiting before he you know for him to make a move before you react to it you're in trouble somehow some way you've got to be able to have a little bit of momentum on him anticipating him going and then oh. when he does oh we got a spin spin up in turn four. Could it be our third caution of the day? Yes, Mark Tanois in the 90 goes around. Good job keeping it out of the fence and nobody hit him, so. Yeah, and great job by the guys that were right behind him because when Wah went spinning, tire smoke went everywhere. And I know from that experience, you can't see where you're going, but they were patient and allowed him to slide down out of their way. He slides up and gets into Garrett Smithley and that's gonna turn him around. And again, <laughs> Daniel right there. There's Suarez, he's like, man. Look at Elliot Sadler sneaking to the outside. I'm looking at our scoring monitor, and it says right now, Daniel Suarez, first car one lap down. We've not gotten the confirmation from NASCAR, but he may very well have gotten the free pass here. Yes, he oh. did. We just got confirmation back on the lead lap, Daniel Suarez. Is that Bubba Wallace back yeah, there? Yeah, Derek. Definitely got a fence. You can see these cars there. You just got aero tight clear. right there. Those two were side by side like that. That's your quarter. That's your quarter. That'll bite you every Still time. Clear. Clear. All the way down to stay up. up. Four's on the bottom. Got to be frustrating. Wallace 13th right now. Wow, well, check my tip on right side. It's scratched. Yeah, you know what, uh, Clint, you've been coming here a long time, as have I. I've always found on a hot, sunny day, turn four is the toughest place of this mile and a half racetrack. We've had three cautions so far, three spins in turn four. I mean, one of them was, was a result of oil, but but that's just that's just a place on this racetrack where, where you just can't get any grip. Well, you just carry so much speed and, and momentum through that center, all of a sudden you're running out of room, running out of room, and that baby will come out from underneath of you. Last caution, Larry, we saw a handful of guys pit for fuel only. What are you thinking here, 44 laps in? Yeah, I mean, we've only actually run eight green flag laps since they were last on pit road. So I still, with only four sets of tires laying in the pits, I'm not sure you come and get tires. But I do, I will say this, Adam, and you mentioned it. I like the fact about those guys coming to pit road and getting fuel on that last caution, because I think you said it. That at least puts them in a position to make it on two more stops. And for Ty Dillon, the best of that group, Right now, he's in the 11th spot. Doesn't have great track position, but when you consider where he is in regard to the fuel window, that's a good thing. Two races here last year, that's 400 laps. Six total cautions. We've had three in the first 44 laps today. We can't get stretched out, Adam. We've got these cars, Clint said, at three and four wide on the restarts. They're all over each other. The track uh, doesn't have a ton of grip, and there's a ton of eagerness behind the wheel to get to the front. And it's, it sure makes our jobs a lot more entertaining, you know? You get so used to long green flag runs and, and you know, uh, green flag pit stops. I'll take this. Yeah, and Elliot, Every day. Elliot Sadler is another guy that will take it. He's got to be really happy right now. They're back on pit road working on that one main car. You can see a lot of work there. They can get that thing tweaked and tuned. He can still get a top five finish. Now let's celebrate some guys running inside the top ten. Jeb Burton 
Had to start at the rear because of a, a qualifying accident. He's fifth right now under caution. J.J. Yaley is seventh. Blake Cook is eighth. Ryan Sieg is ninth. The rookie out of Atlanta, Brandon Jones, is tenth. Ross Chastain, Drew Herring just outside the top ten. Really good effort by those drivers. Up front, Denny Hamlin has the race lead. He's led 30 of 45 laps so far in the Hisense 4K TV 300. Another lap or so before we go green at Charlotte Motor Speedway. NASCAR Xfinity Series competing for the 11th time this season. 47 of 200 complete, and we're under caution for the third time. And, Clint, we always love having you cup regulars in the booth. Love to give back to your foundation. So what do you guys have going on right now? Yeah, we, well, first of all, we certainly, you know, appreciate it. Uh, we set up the 79 fund several years back in, in within, you know, conjunction with the Emporia Community Foundation. It's always fun to go back home to your hometown and give back. I think it's uh, it means so much to me to be able to go back over the years, have our golf tournament, um, you know, and, and be able to give back to people that meant so much to you over the years. Uh, we try to focus on kids first and foremost, and then, you know, just ways to improve the community for everybody. Uh, I went back to Emporia with Clint one, one, uh, one trip, and the community center that you helped build there and everything you do for the town and how much energy there is for you and, and our, our NASCAR community. I really appreciate what you've done there and uh, look forward to being a part of many, uh, many more things to come. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. That was a big day for us, uh, having your brother and, and yourself there. Uh, do you know where I found him? We took a break. <laughs> there, was a, there was a break that day. You'll never guess where he was at. I'm not sure. You know we're live right now on the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he was at the uh, spa getting his toes done. Wow. And uh, it was a hoot, boy. They, I, we walk in there, and it was like all he had them all. I like had, every employee in there, he had them corralled around telling stories. It was hilarious. I had quite the team working over my hands and feet. <laughs> it and, took uh, a team. Turns out, <laughs> and Michael, a chainsaw. 
Michael enjoys the finer things in life. Did you see Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> <laughs> Let's Some, go racing, sometimes boys. Sometimes I feel like I'm in it. <laughs> All right, restart as we complete lap 49. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, Justin Allgaier, Joey Logano, Blake Cook, Brandon Jones, the first three rows. Hamlin choosing the inside lane here. That's strange. He just made the outside work. Keeping him thinking, isn't he? Oh, Kyle is ready for it this time. He might go to the lead right here. Yes, and he's got a big push from behind. Ryan Blaney is right on Larson. And we know how much Larson likes the high side. 42 on point at Charlotte. Three wide behind him. Look at Cole Custer in that 88 trying to rally. You talked about Jeff Burton in the top 10 in that 43 car for Richard Petty Motorsports. Custer not afraid to use the high lane. Ryan Blaney Ooh. able to get around Denny Hamlin. Joey Logano was there as we look back behind him. Custer was on the outside, looked down the middle for a moment. Here he is dipping inside of Brendan Gaughan in the white red fixed. 62. I think it's Brendan Poole. Golly, this is intense action. These restarts are incredible, the way these guys shuffle and try to gain every position possible. And I think this track's a little too slick to be doing so. <laughs> we seen a lot of carnage and uh, you know a lot of people in the fence already. Well we talked about the Toyota dominance. We've got a different story now. We've got a Chevy and a Chevy and a Ford out front. And Two we're, Fords. And we're seeing something we haven't seen in a while. Team Penske running right at the front in the Xfinity Series. Now, now in their defense, their mile and a half program has been pretty good, but this is solid. Second and third, and look, look at this mess going into turn three. The last time we checked in with Bubba Wallace, he was bouncing off the outside wall, and now he's making moves. Cole Custer was moving forward, now sliding back. What's happening there, Vince? Well, the 88 uh, of Cole Custer, remember, just 18 years old. Still hasn't even graduated high school yet. That's not for another for a couple of weeks. June 9th, he'll be running the truck in Texas, so he won't even be able to attend. But right now, his thoughts are all on getting that race car in a handle. It has been tight through the middle, and this, uh, that's what he's dealt with the most. But right now, we've seen it wiggle a few times as if it's feeling a lot looser. Here comes Hamlin. Talked about those two Fords running second and third. Yellow's out. Hold your line here. Stay low here. Yeah, we got right side. Tires are up. But we got heavy right side damage. Fourth. Four, what you got there, bud? Fourth caution of the day. Spencer Gallagher making a few starts this season. Full time in the Camping World Truck Series. It's a heck of a day at sea, sir. I mean, these guys are going every which way. We had cars into the wall in both ends of the track. Free pass goes to Jeff Green, scored 34th. With it. Watch Gallagher up there. The green car just darts over to the right. Pancake at top. How good, still rolling. Easy, and easy, easy. Clear that one. Here's your pancake top. Go ahead. That was Spencer Gallagher. Here's Carl Long. Look at and, that. And where was that, Michael? Turn four. He did a nice job there. But I think the contact of Gallagher into the outside wall in two probably put some debris down. You can see that's a second. That's the second time he hit again in turn four. And his car is pretty well used up. You, you hate to say it, and folks at home, we're going to say it. Hot and slick. <laughs> <laughs> Drink. Hang in there. <laughs> Th I hope, hope three of the last four races here had Three cautions total. Right. We've had four today, and we're just past the one quarter point in this race. Yeah, we've run enough caution flag laps now that I believe we've stretched this thing out far enough, Adam, where these teams are going to go ahead and get four tires because we've got enough laps in the books where they're not going to get nervous with just three set in there. And they also got to be thinking, at some point, we're going to have a long green flag run. Last four races here have produced at least one cycle of green flag pit stops. Top five as we had set to pit. Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, Justin Allgaier. And yes, they are coming to pit road. Chris, what's happening? Well, two restarts ago, Kyle Larson said nothing wrong with the race car. That was just a mistake on my end. That last restart, he got everything right. Said the takeoff speed very good in the 42 car. If anything, just a little bit tight down in three and four. There. So the team going to do four tires and fuel on this stop. Jamie. 
18 of Denny Hamlin, a little surprised when he was told to pit, but he said the car is good, doesn't need anything, just four tires. Joey Logano said it feels competitive. You saw the wedge adjustment there and a four tire stop for the 22, Vince. Ryan Blaney's been in the top five, says it's a bit tight, but they're not sure if that's from the damage that he got on pit road early in the race. They made a tape on the front grill and uh, four tires for Blaney. And a change coming off pit road, Austin Dillon who had pitted earlier, takes two tires here. He's the race leader when we come back. Set for the restart at lap 57 here in the High Sense 4K TV 300 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Austin Dillon, two tire stop, won the race off pit road. Five drivers stayed out. Front row for this restart, going to be Darrell Wallace Jr., who got four tires when he pitted at lap 46 in Ross Chastain. And we've now added a lap, so one more circuit before we go green. You, you got to grab your hat on this restart. We got a crazy lineup here. One of the guys that had trouble on pit road was the 42 of Kyle Larson. See if we can see what happens. What happened there? All right, a lug nut got caught on top of the caliper and they had to take the rim back off to get the nut out or we would have ruined the race here. Okay, it's all good. That's a good heads up call right there on those guys part. It's so hard, you're under their gun. Everybody wants you to perform at your best. You have to have a fast pit stop. That was smart of him to pull the wheel back off, take the extra time and make sure that lug nut was out of there because that would have ruined their day. We, we, we talked to, we saw Ryan Priest earlier. He's talking about no laps here at this racetrack. He's gonna start on the outside of the second row. Ross Chastain and Bubba Wallace, who, who's been in the outside wall, they're on the front row and you've got the really fast cars of Austin Dillon, Algar and Hamlin back in sixth, seventh and eighth. This restart's gonna be hairy. They will be three wide in turn one, no doubt. And paying off Kyle Larson had the race lead when the caution came out. You mentioned the guys that, that stayed out. So the stat, a, a little bit fraudulent, but he went from the race lead to 22nd on that cycle. Be fun to watch the 42 try and drive through the field. Boy, guys, this is uh, this is how this race is, is trending here. This this is a recipe for disaster right here. <laughs> you know who might be glad they're 22nd? Kyle Larson. <laughs> <laughs> might have been a good call. Blessing in disguise for those guys. Bubba Wallace, so good here last season. Had an issue on pit road, finished fifth. Coming off a runner up at Dover a couple of weeks ago, chooses the outside lane as the race leader on the restart. 
How good does that must feel for Garrett Smithley? He's up there in the top five right now, trying to hold on. But here comes Denny Hamlin on the outside. Look at Chastain down on the bottom, trying to grab the lead away from Wallace. He did a great job at getting a jump on there and putting himself in position to keep that lead right there. I don't think either one of them is going to be out front long because <laughs> Hamlin with those four fresh tires, electric on the restart. He goes high. Logano goes low. Oh, this is going to be fun in turn four. What about the job Chastain is doing on the bottom? That's so hard to groove down there, not get loose, and he's doing it. He's doing a great job. JD Motorsports well represented on this restart just north of lap 55. Ross Chastain trying to get the race Clear lead. Up. Yeah, slide up in front of him. How about that? And problems here for Bubba Wallace's teammate. That's Ryan Reed smoking. Side by side for third give that spot to Denny Hamlin drives underneath of Joey Logano here comes Austin Dillon Ross Chastain leads this race we've had a little bit of everything today and that's as good of part of it as I've seen we thought that would happen right Ross Chastain out front <laughs> <laughs> tell you what a lot of smoke out of Ryan Reed's car in the left rear there was it obviously contact right, right there I don't either buddy I would be pitting if I were you soon Ryan Reed's never finished outside the top 15 at Charlotte. Oh, it's mm. still smoking. I believe we better come. Look at that contact. He got into it with Ryan Priest. The second one was the bad one. It hit right there on his tailpipes to the right side where you know it's solid. This smashed the fender in. Meanwhile, back at the front, it's Denny Hamlin in charge. Joey Logano gets around the four car of Ross Chastain, but he is battling, Chris. Boy, he's trying to hang on to that lead. He got the lead because of the track position he gained when he stayed out on the racetrack. He pitted back on 46, but guys, before he pitted, he was running up as high as seventh in this race, so he's having a good race here, and they threw out the setup that they were working on on Thursday. They started completely new today, and obviously it's working much better for them. And Chris, I know you see how hard those crews work down there trying to get these cars tuned up. And when you can put one out front like they did there for JD Motorsports, it's got to be so rewarding. We got a pit, Ryan. We might have our fifth caution soon if he doesn't. Still there. It's your quarter. Kyle Larson restarted there. 22nd. Here he comes back to the front, got, already in the right. top 10. Coming out by you. Trying to get it back straight. Okay, you're good. Come on, straight forward here. Straight forward. You get to pit road. Come on, you're clear yeah, you down. Can... Clear down. I'm going to you right here. Four, four, four. You can hear that tire beating the, the crush panels out of it. It's just unfortunate. It was a matter of a time. Well, we get these tires changed, Clint. Maybe Hayden, <laughs> that big slide through turn four brought on a caution. He's able to get his problem fixed. He Stay did in. do a good job of keeping it out of the fence. Spencer Gallagher gets the free pass. He's 34th. Ryan Reed on pit road. Fifth caution of the afternoon. Watch how long he slides this baby when that left rear goes flat. There it went right there, blew out. Did a nice job of hanging on to Boy, it. Boy, look at the wall was there. You could see it step out, touch that wall, and kind of got him pointed right. Stays on the fuel right there and keeps it underneath of him and locks it down here. There goes Suarez again. <laughs> I'm darn another one of y'all spun out in front of me. You know, he's back up to 18th. He was 35th at one time. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't wreck that car with that tire blowing out. He made that aggressive move outside of Ryan Priest. Was racing for a spot inside the top 10. The contact eventually cuts the tire, and now he finds himself outside the top 25 in a damaged race car. You know what, though? The car was damaged. Truth be told, he's probably better off right now than he was before if he would have pitted. Um, well, without a doubt, he is. Because he's doing it under caution. The, yeah, and yeah. he's on the lead lap. Created a, you know, it, that was a... That was a bad situation that could have been a lot worse. And I was thinking about Darrell Wallace Jr. who stayed out, Ross Chastain on that last caution. Things stabilized here. They're in the top ten. That strategy may work out for them. Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, Bubba Wallace, Austin Dillon, your top five, 64 laps in at Charlotte.
Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway under caution in the Hisense 4K TV 300. We thought hot and slick would be the words of the day. Caution would be the other common phrase here. Brandon Jones clipping Justin Allgaier early lap seven, Larry. Well, I think that's from a very hot and slick racetrack. Just got away from Brandon Jones right there. I see what you did there. Hot and slick took on a whole new meaning when Denny Hamlin takes the lead in the 18 car from his teammate Eric Jones, but then two JGR cars involved got caught up in some oil there at lap 25. Yeah, obviously Daniel Suarez got caught up in it in the 19 car and Elliott Sadler in the one car. Nowhere to go. They have made probably over a dozen pit stops repairing that car. Daniel Suarez got his lap back. Eric Jones still being scored two laps down. Now trouble in the 16 for Ryan Reed. Yeah, he had a left rear that was rubbing and I think we knew if he did not come to pit road, this is exactly what was going to happen. He brought out our fifth caution. Daniel, the longest green flag run we've had was the first run to start the race of 13 laps. Okay, 16 minutes and five seconds of green flag racing, over 48 minutes of yellow flags today. You hardly ever see that here in the Xfinity Series. And it's driving the crew chiefs crazy because they only had six sets of tires, including what they started the race on right there. And you'd like to see some long runs where you kind of know what you need to do as far as strategy. Right now, Denny Hamlin out in front, 14 career wins in the Xfinity Series. Adam, the last one at a 1.5 mile track. You got to go back to Clint Boyer's home state of Kansas. The year was 2008. And Danielle, if you had told me about 70 laps in, Denny Hamlin would be out front, I'd say, yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me. Some of this other stuff, I was not prepared for. You might have also said, what, we've probably had one caution, had a yeah. couple of green flag runs and near 80 laps. You know, that's just how it goes here at Charlotte. But with this track surface being so challenging today, these Xfinity guys, we've got a bunch of young cats out there, and they're on go. They want to go hard. And this is probably some of the most difficult track position, track conditions they've ever faced. Well, I tried to warn you. Well, I'm telling you, when I was out there in practice, I'm like, man, you know, when I was driving down here this morning, you know it's going to be slick. You know it's going to be hard to drive. I didn't think it was going to be that slick and then you add on some oil and, and uh, you know that carnage that we had in there it's just been it's been a wild race it's been fun the words off the top Danielle said it hot and slick and uh, the old lady living up to Nailed her reputation it. and you know what hey y'all watch this because it isn't <laughs> over yet we're still going to see the same kind of intense action surely they'll calm down we're going to run out of them if they don't <laughs> getting ready for the restart and when the green flag goes in the air Brennan gone will be eighth Hey Shane, good decision on pit box. Why we picked back there? And four. I wish I pitted a little bit forward at first. I know it might have helped me out. Not that it made me look like a doofus. That's all right. I'm just talking about the overall pit box selection. It's uh, I've watched it every time. I've seen guys get pinned and stuck and slow down. But we've gained spots because of it. So nice job. I love it when people are happy with the plan. They plan to pit back on that end of pit road, and it's worked out well. And they move forward with that car. I'm going to steal a, a phrase from our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. A lot of comers and goers in this race today. Resetting the top ten as we've added a lap before we go caution. Denny Hamlin leads. He's been out front for 42 laps today. Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, Darrell Wallace Jr., Austin Dillon, our top five. And what's the latest on Eric Jones? Haven't mentioned his name in a while, Vince. Well, after uh, starting this race from the pole and uh, leading 14 laps, now finds himself a couple of laps down. You guys have documented that accident and going through the oil and the damage that they've done. Really, the team's done a nice job getting that car repaired enough to, at this point, be in a position that Eric says it's actually pretty close. So uh, at one point, he said the steering wheel is literally upside down in my hand. So they knew they had a big problem with the toe and so forth, and uh, they've gotten that addressed. Not perfect by any stretch, but we still got a long way to go. He'll try to make his way back from a couple the laps down and, and you know Adam we talked at the beginning of the race about experience versus youth and I said I think one of these young cats are going to get their number today I would like to back up on that statement because <laughs> four of the top five drivers are cup guys guys that race on Sunday they've got the knowledge and experience to handle these slick conditions and we've just seen drivers that haven't had that saw Ryan Reed sitting patiently for the field he uh, got in front of the pace car shouldn't have so they'll pull by him when they come down close to the start finish line 
Chris Elliott Sadler that team's worked awfully hard today boy they really have they were part of that melee when we had the uh, oil on the racetrack and you could see the nose of that car tons of bear bond trying to hold everything together and uh, the team got it all taped up actually got a uh, gauge uh, the heavy gauge screen on the grill to try and uh, keep that radiator safe and after a couple left Elliott Sadler saying the water temp just getting way too hot so he's had to come back into pit lane they've had to pull that screen away trying to get some air to that radiator so right now that nose might be held together, but that radiator, pretty vulnerable. Unofficial count on pit stops for the one of Elliott Sadler. 16 trips down the pit lane. Today, it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series, 300 miles. Tomorrow, double it. Longest race of the year for Sprint, Sprint Cup guys. This Coca-Cola 600 happens at 5.30 Eastern time on your local Fox station. You can watch it live at Fox Sports Go. Clint, you ready to go tomorrow? You better be. 600 <laughs> miles around here is a long night. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a, a special weekend. It's so much fun to be able to be home, to be racing, watching the Indy 500, and then getting in there and, and having your, your crack at the wheel. It's going to be a lot of fun and a big day. And just also to, to, to pay thanks, give thanks to all the, the military that have uh, given it all for our country. And there'll be uh, so many servicemen and women here tomorrow night. They're able to shake their hand and give them a hug and just tell them how much we appreciate them. This is a sure. special weekend here at Charlotte. Marcus Smith and everyone at the Charlotte Motor Speedway just does an amazing job of making tomorrow one of the most special days of the whole year. A lot of pride. Very proud to be in this country. Hamlin once again chooses the inside lane. This time it will be Joey Logano to his outside. Look back there in row five. Kyle Larson outside lane in the 42. I can see that orange and red machine getting aggressive as we go green. Boy, maybe a little patience might work. <laughs> No, we're looking three wide. Yeah, Why not? <laughs> we, that didn't last long. We're three wide, a couple rows deep there. It's Justin Allgaier that said, I'm going to try it up by the wall, see what happens. Larson comes up the middle. Teammates side by side for second. Blaney Ooh. inside of Logano. And we've gotten word that this restart under review. NASCAR taking a look. I think they're all under review, Adam. You told me that a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> they're going to watch every move you make in that restart zone. And these drivers are going to push it all they can. Hamlin has the top spot. Blaney to second. Logano now third. Now, Clint, you're going to be faced with these situations tomorrow. What are they reviewing there? What do you see? Looked pretty clean to me. Yeah, it, it certainly did that time. I mean, I saw that the, the 22 was kind of gaining and getting a run, a little, momentum, a little momentum on him, but he didn't beat him to the line, so. Well, that's not the rule. You can beat him to the line. You just can't leave before he does, and NASCAR has been watching that very closely, and that's probably they just wanted to confirm that Hamlin was the guy that got the initial start. And I think NASCAR will say that that one was fine. I think it's the right call. Got the confirmation. Restart all good. And the restart for Kyle Larson has been positive as well. Restarted ninth. Has worked his way up to sixth as he went around Bubba Wallace. And Bubba taking a page out of Larson's book. Running right up next to the paint. Wow. It looked like he was going to a different track when he got to turn three. <laughs> and judging from the sound of his throttle, I think he thought he was going to for a minute. <laughs> you can definitely tell there was a lot of off-throttle time there. He is high, wide, and handsome. And look, Let me he's, tell you. he's making it work, too. That's good momentum off turn two. I think his sponsor might describe a NASCAR car as well as one ever has. It's loudmouth. These things make a lot of noise. One more spot for Kyle Larson from 22nd after the pit issues back inside the top five. And if you monitor his lap times, he's doing some pretty positive things since the green flag went back in the air. In front of him, Austin Dillon, who swept the races here last year. Joey Logano, who won this race in 2012. Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin, the race leader. I think Bubba's determined to make that oh, high side work. And I like his lap times now. He was able to gain on Algar there. As those tires get slicker, Clint, will it get better up high, or, or do you think it goes away on the older tires? Well, I mean, it's certainly a bigger arc. You know, you don't have to pull on the tires near as hard. But, um, you know, let's listen in. Let's see what he thinks. 
Chris, is he making the team nervous running that high line? <laughs> well, I think he's just searching for some grip out there. This team had some real troubles in practice on Thursday, but late in final practice, they finally made some headway. Got the front end of the car working the way that Bubba Wallace Jr. wanted, and it's working good in this race, too. He said, if anything, the car just a little bit tight, but his crew chief, Seth, Seth Barber, told me, this weekend, he said, we've got to turn this thing around. We've got to get some good results on these mile-and-a-half racetracks. This is a real point in Bubba Wallace's career where he's got to get some good results. And all that's right on my shoulders. Needed. All the way down if he need it. Got it pretty good there. Just be ready, guys. Here, be ready. Coming to you. Pushed it too Still far. Still there. Still there. Still there, top. That was coming to you here. Probably coming to you. Probably coming to you. Got to go. Caught the wall running seventh. Uh, yeah, it all started from his entrance. You know, he was a lot shallower, a lot lower entering, and it kind of shot him high and just had to pull on the wheel and got too tight and unfortunately got into it there. Stay up, stay up, coming on the bottom here. Coming on the bottom inside, you're clear all the way down if you need it. All the way down if you need it. Got it pretty good there. Just be ready, guys. Here, be ready, coming to you. No caution. NASCAR's got spotters over there checking for debris. But evidently all good off turn two, so we stay green. Would have been our sixth yellow flag of the afternoon as it stands. Denny Hamlin stays out front. 79 laps complete. He's led 53 of them. Blaney behind him. Then it's Logano and Austin Dillon who's got company. Here's Kyle Larson looking for another position. You know what, what I found really interesting about Kyle Larson, we've always celebrated the fact that he would go to the high side. He wanted to be the guy that runs up next to the wall. Well, I think he might have got a little bit tired of hearing that because he wants to show everybody that he's going to do whatever it takes to be the fastest because we've seen him go down more on the bottom and run that lane. He's not shy about going up high. He's a dirt racer. He knows there's grip all over the place. You just got to go search it out. Well, I think that comes from the mentality. You can't go through them. You got to go around them somehow. And I think everybody catches on. You know, I know uh, uh, from racing with him that he wants that outside. So you're not going to give it to him. You know, and I think a lot of that stems from that. If he's in your mirror, you're going to try to block the outside line and put him down on the bottom. But he's a good enough racer. You do that. He's just going to go around you anyway. There's the day for Kyle Larson. If you weren't with us, he lost all those spots on pit road, was leading when he came down and, and made his stop. But he's rallied back from 22nd, now fourth. And, and you talk about a guy that's got a ton of momentum, so close to getting that first career Sprint Cup win at Dover, but raced Matt Kenseth in the most gentleman of ways. And I think because of that, his fan base grew exponentially, won the Sprint Showdown in dramatic fashion here one week ago, and nearly got the $1 million in the All-Star race. Yeah, and he also has been the fastest car on the track the last two laps. He's got about a tenth on our leaders, so he's sitting there in the fourth spot. He knows he's got that car handling well. Just be a matter of time until he runs those guys down. You know, I went over and watched that mini outlaw race they had at Millbridge Speedway the other night. Boy, he put on a show. <laughs> you want to talk about good racing. It was so much fun to watch those guys. And he came out on top and won that, baby. It was fun. Can you imagine a guy that was over here last Saturday night racing for a million dollars? He goes to a dirt track in North Carolina to race a go-kart for a trophy. That's just wanting to get it done. These aren't just go-karts. <laughs> You should have seen the flips they had. This guy flipped like 20 feet in the air, ripped the fence down. I'm thinking, Kyle, I don't know if this is smart being out here. So he's driving the 42. The guy driving the 43, not bad today either, Jeff Burton, Jamie. Heck of an effort for the 43. Jeff Burton just earlier today in qualifying got into the wall, spun around, had right rear damage, and he helped his team repair it. And because of that, he had to start in the back of the field, and he has raced his way forward. He's on the same strategy as the rest of the guys in the top 10. He's saying his car's just a little tight on the restart, but keep in mind that he's only had one top 10 this year, so this would be a big feat for this team. And I, I love that, Adam. That's an awesome job by that team, and that just shows you how bad Jeff Burton wants it. Mention that, kid. Mention that top 10 came at Atlanta earlier this season. Out front, Denny Hamlin, 85 complete.
10 laps shy of halfway in the Hisense 4K TV 300. It's the NASCAR Xfinity Series live at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Good to have you with us on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon with Michael Walter, Clint Boyer, I'm Adam Alexander. Denny Hamlin leads this race. He's been out front for 65 laps. But Ryan Blaney closing in on him and right behind him, Kyle Larson, who's already passed Joey Logano for third. Denny better find a way, a, a different way around this racetrack. That bottom line is, has got him this far, but if he don't move up soon, I think Blaney and Larson might go around him. Yeah, you said, uh, Adam, when we came back, good to have you with us. Well, <laughs> Denny Hamlin doesn't feel so good about what he's got with him now because these two kids that are right behind them in the form of Blaney and Kyle Larson, wow, they are faster than Denny right now, and they're using the higher line. I just think back to the Sprint Showdown last Saturday morning, Blaney and Larson in that mix, and here they are again today in that same approach. Just let it all hang out and go get it. If you want to know the benefits of the high line, watch the end of the straightaway. He just gets that car wound up, and then all the way down the back, you'll see him make strides on Hamlin. That car will get bigger and bigger out the front windshield. You know, Ever since I've been coming here, uh, it, it's always really fascinating to me how that outside line works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Some years it works and some years that it doesn't. Um, the one thing that I can say up there, it seems like if, if you can keep your car freed up and really rolling through there, uh, it's good. But sometimes you get up there and you're really pulling on the wheel, scrubbing a lot of tire, and, and before you know it, you're too tight and they're driving back off from you on the bottom, which is kind of what we're seeing. And I don't think people understand how good these guys are to run that line, to run nearly 190 miles an hour into the corner and then run four or five inches off of a wall. I mean, that takes a lot of talent. For Kyle Larson, 22nd to second since the restart, that means Ryan Blaney now third, Vince. Well, and crew chief Greg Irwin gave Blaney some props a little bit earlier for the way he was running the top side as they've had to do. But he thought that uh, when I talked to Greg before the race, he thought it was really an advantage for Ryan that he's doing the double duty, that having all those laps in the cup car, granted the cup car and the Xfinity Series car, very different. But he said finding grip is finding grip. And all those laps of finding grip in the cup car can't help but help you when you're trying to find grip in the Xfinity car. And I think we're seeing that today. Blaney here going around a couple of lap cars. B.J. McLeod, Elliott Sadler just went a lap down. They are 22nd and 23rd on track. And, and if you're Denny Hamlin and you know those guys are coming, what, what do you want to hear from your spotter, from your crew chief at this stage? Well, I mean, Denny's been doing this long enough, and they've been doing it together long enough that they're working, and they see Kyle Larson catching him on the outside. I wouldn't be surprised if once he gets to him, Denny doesn't make an adjustment and try to block him. And that'll show you how talented the, the driver of the 18 car is. Hamlin can just pop right up there in that outside lane, even though I talk about how difficult it is. Take that lane away and never miss a beat. It is something that you can't just do, though. You're exactly right, Michael. It's not like you're going to. you got to go up there and test the waters. As you can see right there, he didn't necessarily go in on the fence, and then he got passed. But he might get it figured out here and get right back up to him. One here in 2014, fast today. Kyle Larson drives around Denny Hamlin new race leader at lap 98. The other part of that is, is Denny's smart enough to know that it's not time yet. You know, that pay window's not open yet, and when it is, maybe he will jump up there and get after it. Last time these guys came down pit road, lap 55, we're closing on that fuel window, Larry. Yeah, but the thing I want to make note here right now is actually our high sense smart race strategy by Kyle Larson's pit crew. Go back to lap 55. That tire changer knew something was not right. He took the time to correct it. You're going to see it right here. When he goes to put the right front back on, a lug nut is hung there. Yeah, this was a 21 second pit stop. He fell outside the top 25, but they corrected it right there rather than send him out there with a, with a wheel that was going to be loose. And right now here at the halfway point, Kyle Larson has taken the lead. So that was the right front tire changer that made that move. And that's absolutely the high sense smart race strategy and being on their game. 40 laps it took him since the restart to go from 22nd to the race lead and an assist to Steven Price, who made the call on the lug nut. It cost him some time on the pit lane, but they're in the race lead now.
This June, the greatest golfers in the world converge on the historic Oakmont Country Club for the 116th U.S. Open Championship. Live coverage begins Thursday, June 16th on FS1 and continues through the final round Sunday, June 19th on Fox. You can watch the entire tournament at Fox Sports Go. And I'm going to do just that. I love golf, and I love no the doubt. fact that the U.S. Open's on Fox. That's awesome. You know, I was thinking about this. Big weekend for Roger Penske. He's going to drive the pace car tomorrow for the 100th Indianapolis 500. No doubt has guys capable of winning that race. It would be his 17th. But don't forget about the other guy that goes back and forth between Charlotte and Indy on Memorial Day weekend. Chip Ganassi. We know he could win tomorrow in Indy. Could win here tomorrow night with this guy, Kyle Larson, Jamie McMurray, and perhaps a real good start to the weekend with uh, Kyle out front here and pretty strong, having led 14 laps in his advantage right now, a second over the runner-up, Denny Hamlin. And Larry, before too long, these guys are going to have to make scheduled green flag pit stops. Yeah, their last trip to pit road was back on lap 55. So if you do the fuel window like it is, 55 to 60 laps, I'm going to say any time within the next 8 to 10 laps, we'll see these green flag stops. But with the way the race pace falls off, it will absolutely be monkey see, monkey do. Once the leaders come, everybody's going to have to come. And from there, still one more trip to pit road. One car that we saw up in the, in the lead, actually, and running the top 10, the four of Ross Chastain, he just made a pit stop. So these guys are going to start pitting here soon. And I would say that is a scheduled stop. Any word on when the race leader will make his way down pit road, Chris? Well, Adam, I think we're less than 10 laps away. He's very happy with his race car. And if you remember back, back, back to last fall, that's when Chip Ganassi Racing started bringing out their own cars. It was at Texas they debuted their own chassis, ran up front that day, but had a blown tire. Then they went and won their first race with their own cars at Homestead. Jamie? And Chris Gale's calling the shots for the 18, and he just told his driver, Denny Hamlin, we want to try to pit one lap sooner than the 42. So they want to change up their strategy a bit to get that advantage. They haven't made a single change on this race car all day. It's been that good. Vince? As far as the 12 of Ryan Blaney currently running third, they're looking to pit about lap 117 or so. Right now, Ryan says the car has just gotten loose into three, and it's tight as he tries to get it down to the bottom, right where you saw him right there just a moment ago. And he's also developed a little bit of a vibration in the front end. They've been keeping a close eye on that as they have the water temperatures. That's been an issue throughout the course of the day for the 12. They've been keeping an eye on and uh, Adam, we heard Larry McReynolds talk about how the tires would fall off. That's the reason why Hamlin wants to get to pit road prior. Oh, he's got a problem with Elliott Sadler. That's why Hamlin wants to beat Larson to the pits. It's like a right front's down. One finish outside the top 10 this season for Elliott Sadler came at Bristol. One at Talladega, a host of problems today. They had stayed on the lead lap despite the damage for a long, long time. But from 22nd, Sadler going to have to pit again. And we see here what fresh tires means. Yeah, that's the advantage of getting your tires earlier, maybe as much as a second a lap. And here okay. comes Hamlin. He's going to try to get to pit road and get those new tires, Jamie. That's right. He just called him down in pit lane. He said, nothing looks like we're going to have a debris caution, right? Right? They said, nope. So come on down. The team was ready to see him take a tear off there so he can have a nice clear vision. A four-tire stop. They finally make a chassis adjustment on the 18. Meanwhile, others are following suit. The 22, the 42, a Kyle Larson on pit road. Joey Logano saying he needs some more security. Can't run real high on the track like he wants to. A four-tire stop, a wedge adjustment there. Chris? Kyle Larson makes his way down pit lane. Wanted to come in the previous lap, but the team told him at the last second, don't come in because Elliott Sadler was in the box in front of him, and they thought they'd be a little bit slower on that stop. But Kyle Larson very happy with his race car. Just four tires, no changes. The advantage when Denny Hamlin came down, made his pit stop, nine-tenths of a second lead for Kyle Larson. We'll see how it cycles out. What about Austin Dillon, Vince? Well, the two of Austin Dillon took just two tires last time. You saw the chassis adjustment right there. He said it is tight everywhere, but he also has said that the motor feels like it's missing out at times throughout the course of the run. The 12 of uh, Ryan Blaney. Remember, I just told you a moment ago they were hoping to wait till about lap 117, but when the leaders came early, Blaney now coming early as well. It's going to be a four tire change for Ryan Blaney. They had a little bit of looseness going into turn three, keeping an eye on that vibration and also that water temperature, certainly something top of mind. Jamie? And Brandon Poole doing a nice job today, his second race here at Charlotte. They pull out that 
right rear fender, a four tire stop for him. Car's got a little bit better, just tight in the middle is what he's complaining, not turning as smoothly as he'd like. Cole Custer had taken over the race lead. He gives it up to come down pit road. Ryan Reed right behind him. And as we look out the window here, we can see a fuel can, and there you see it, right in the middle of pit road. And typically in these situations, NASCAR will try and let the green flag cycle through so no one gets held up by the penalty. And there's going to be a penalty for that guy, Brennan Poole, leaving the pit box with equipment. That is a no-no. He hated for that gas guy, too. You know, you could see him. He's told the crew chief, I'm good. It's full. Go ahead and go. They dropped the jack, and he wasn't good. That team was inside the top ten when the cycle of green flag pit stops began. Eighth is where he was scored. Look at Hamlin. He's our leader. Put it out. Put it out. Oh. And there's the caution. Here's what's interesting. He would have been the leader. Suarez was in front of him. He had, had not pitted yet, but this could be good for Daniel because there's only 18 guys on the lead lap. He can make his service here and be in a pretty good standing. That's real good for Daniel Suarez. And I'll tell you, another guy that's all worked out for is Ross Chastain. He pitted earlier than everyone else. We saw him behind our leader, but keeping pace with Larson. Now that those cars pitted, he's going to be back on the lead lap too. So another great break for this team. When you run good, good things happen to you. And that Dreamwater car is right today. Other you know, guys that'll have to pit here, Garrett Smithley and Dakota Armstrong in the top five, but they had not made their green flag pit stop. And Jamie, you know, she talked about it. Uh, Hamlin's crew was wanting to pit a lap sooner than Larson. That strategy definitely paid off as they resume the lead again. One lap on those fresh tires makes a huge difference, and that's how Hamlin was able to get it done. Yeah, and Larson is as good as there is, but Hamlin, he's gotten some speeding tickets uh, in the Cup, yeah. in the Sprint Cup Series on Sunday afternoons, but he really works those speed lines as, as close as he possibly can, trying to gain an advantage. Maybe he got a bit of one there. I know anytime you guys at the Sprint Cup level, particularly uh, make a mistake. You just want to get sharper and sharper and better and better at it. And uh, that means you just have to push it that much more. And that's how you, you keep getting better is make those mistakes, find that line and, and keep perfecting that line and push it to the limit every single time. Um, and, and you never know. I'm, I'm certainly, you know, that that was a big part of it, but it could have been a better pit stop. It could have been a lot of different things. There's so much that happens, but as a race car driver, you got to do all you can do. And that's coming in and, in and off pit road. You just saw the NASCAR official pick up the fuel can from Brennan Poole. He was penalized. That's a stop and go under green. Now the caution's out. What a break for the 48. I mean, he's going to lose some track position, but not going to lose a lap and all the other things that would have come with him having to pay his debt under green conditions. Got some cars that will come to pit road, included Suarez. His car's off the pace, but they stayed out. And then Garrett Smithley up in the top five. Uh, had that restart earlier where he was up there, and he's hung in there. What a day for Daniel Suarez, Jamie. Oh, man, it got off to a bad start. He started on the front row, then he spun. He got caught up with the Eric Jones incident, went into the wall. You see all the damage on the front of the nose. And because of that, his oil temp is up to about 295, so they're watching that. But he says car is pretty good. They made a chassis adjustment there and a four-tire stop, and they let him know, hey, you just let a couple of laps here today. <laughs> Who would have believed that when you consider what happened early to the 19 team? And in case you're wondering, Larry talked on strategy earlier. Those guys that made their green flag pit stops, they would have to come one more time, even stretching it in the extra handful of laps that these guys did pitting here under caution. Everybody's still going to have to make at least one more pit stop. It's all cycled through. Denny Hamlin out front once again at Charlotte.
anytime you come to Charlotte, what we all kind of consider our home track, it ups the ante for everybody. You know, we, we have friends, we have family, a lot of us have sponsors in town. The best feeling, you know, you can feel is to win the race and then go home, relax, and have a good night of sleep. It would mean a lot to win here at Charlotte just because this is the backyard. To win out here would be pretty big. Special place for everybody in the NASCAR community, Charlotte Motor Speedway, and we'll find out who's going to get the checkered flag today in 80 laps. Denny Hamlin, the race leader, chooses the outside lane. He's up front with Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, Austin Dillon, and Ty Dillon. Completing the top five, Justin Allgaier, Brandon Jones, Cole Custer, Ross Chastain. Free pass under this, our sixth caution of the afternoon, went to Ryan Sieg. He restarts in the 18th position. So we put the green flag in the air. What do you say? A little Saturday afternoon special. Crank it up from Charlotte Motor Speedway. Start, grab the top spot. Kyle Larson now working over Denny Hamlin for second. Three double dippers at the front. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting to hear the, the throttle traces. I love that in-car audio right there. You can hear as the tires are coming up. There. It's really slick. It's unstable. The cars are light on their feet right there, and you can hear him pedal them. You can see Larson. He got loose off turn two. Hamlin jumps to the Ooh. inside, and now Larson's going to try to cross him back over and take that spot away again. Is that a crossover counteracting, counteracting a crossover there? That was, uh, that was, that was some tight <laughs> race. I thought he was going to make Denny a lot looser than he actually did, but uh, that's, that's just good racing. You know, one of the things that I've been watching, as certainly as we saw the early runnings of this race, and as slick as it was, um, you know, I see that the, the spoilers, you know, where you have the adjustment, the ears on there. I wonder if some of those guys wish they had that other ear on. <laughs> <laughs> Can't change it now. <laughs> yeah, and I was impressed with Logano on that start. I mean, he was able to jump up there and get to the inside of Larson and then work Hamlin over. That's a lot of speed right now to that car. And this is another guy that is on the rebound. The uh, And here comes Ryan Blaney to the inside of Hamlin. So Denny's dropping here. But you were talking about his teammate, Eric Jones. He's in the free pass position, Michael. Right now scored 19th. We get another caution, and based on how the day's going, you believe we will get one. Eric would be back on the lead lap. Yeah, and he's driven past some really fast cars, so the team has done a nice job of repairing that. Yeah, I'm curious to know. We said earlier that Denny Hamlin hadn't made an adjustment all day long on that car um, and then got passed. Do you think that he did make an adjustment there and, and it made the difference there and it went the wrong direction and made him worse? Or do you think these guys are just keep getting closer and closer and surpassed him and, and he needs to make an adjustment? Well, you know how that goes, Clint. If you're leading the race and you don't do anything, you, you know those guys are working on their cars. So you better constantly try to figure out some minor adjustment. I don't know what's happened to Hamlin. What are they saying down there, Jamie? Well, Clint, you're exactly right on that stop. They decided to make a wedge and air pressure adjustment for the 18. He's been saying it's good all day, so perhaps the restart here is just not handling and feeling as good as it has. And Jamie, I'm looking at the top five. You got Logano, Larson, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Austin Dillon, all guys that are running both races this weekend. You expect them to be good in a Saturday afternoon Xfinity Series race. But look at the first guy behind them. 
Cole Custer <laughs> now in the sixth position, second career start, first time he's been here in an Xfinity car. And remember, he was wrecked on pit road earlier in the race, so the teams had to overcome that. But I, I just love how this kid gets up to speed. We saw it in the truck series. He drove to victory lane when he was 16 years old, and now that he's in the Xfinity cars, he looks like he's going to be one of those guys that are just special, can get the job done behind the wheel. 18 now and full of talent, Vince. Well, you got that right, and as Michael said, already a winner. In fact, a two-time winner in the Camping World Truck Series. He is not intimidated out here. He gets that wheel in his hand, and he feels very comfortable. He says the car's a little snug in the center and a little bit loose in, but it's actually better than it has been throughout the course of the day. So it's coming to him at the right time with just over 70 to go. 13th, one week ago in the Truck Series race. Fifth different driver in as many races to pilot the 88 and trying to do what those before him did, finish inside the top 10. You know, the other gauge that I like to use on a driver stepping in a role like that that he doesn't normally run with that team, uh, you know, week in and week out is how he's doing against his team. Teammates. You know, that's that's a good judge to me. Um, obviously, Elliot Sadler had a had a, a bad luck deal there. So that's not a, you know, a, a fair test right there for Elliot. But uh, Cole is, is a great driver, um, a student. You see, man, he just he just learns. He soaks it all in and he's putting it to good use. And just remember the run that Alex Bowman had in that 88 car at Dover. How fun was he to watch? He led that race and looked like he could be a real contender. Bowman gets back behind the wheel of the 88 at Pocono. But today it's Cole Custer's turn and man, he's taking advantage of it. Pretty solid team. They can get that thing trimmed out with about whoever's in it. Dale Jr. got to victory lane for Junior Motorsports, as did. Boy, that'd Elliot's. be some pressure, wouldn't it? Yeah. Jim. <laughs> we Elliot's. got the boss in it. By the way, his name is Dale yeah. Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> Kind of panning through the field here. You saw the top five. There's Cole Custer, that black 88 and sixth. Haven't mentioned Ty Dillon's name a lot today, but the driver from Richard Childress Racing is seventh. Behind him, Justin Allgaier, the third driver from Junior Motorsports, who's enjoying a nice afternoon. Then the lap car of Eric Jones, who says, give me a caution and put me back on the lead lap because I'm fast right now. He's getting ready to drive around our eighth place car of Justin Allgaier. And there's Ward, or gosh darn it, that's Ward's son, <laughs> Ward Burton's son. Ward Burton won the Daytona 500 and the Southern 500, so he deserves a shout out. It shows you how long you've been in the sport. Uh, <laughs> there's Ward Burton, and most people, you know, he's not been in it for what, 20 years? That's Jeb, his son, and Jeb he's doing is, a great job. He, he spun that car out during qualifying, finds himself solidly in the top 10. You know, the, again, hot and slick. The thing that I love about that is, is you have to be able to adjust on your race car. You can't just trim out the fastest car and allow that to work. You've got to drive this thing and communicate and get the most out of it. Air pressure, wedge adjustments, track bar adjustments, and certainly we've seen a big test of that today. And Final car in the top ten, Brennan Poole, his teammate, trying to run down the lead. It's Joey Logano in front of Kyle Larson with 67 to go.
NASCAR Xfinity Series teams racing for the 11th time in 2016. Today we're at Charlotte Motor Speedway and we finally found our rhythm. Caution's the name of the game early. Six of them today. That matches the total we had in two races here a year ago. Our most recent restart saw Joey Logano take over the race lead for the first time. He's in front of Kyle Larson and teammate Ryan Blaney third as we close on 60 to go, Vince. Ryan Blaney, a four-time winner in the Xfinity Series, of course, running full-time in the Sprint Cup Series now. He led earlier today for a couple of laps. He hasn't been pressuring the lead, but he has kept them within sight. And as you see, just a second back should Logano or Larson slip up. Chris? Vince Kyle Larson trying to get that track position back that he lost on pit lane that last round of stops. He came in first, left, and third. And the problem was the rear tire changer slipped coming around the back side of the car. What did he slip on? A lug nut. Lug nuts definitely making this a challenging race for Kyle Larson. Jamie? And the leader, Joey Logano, they made a wedge and air pressure adjustment, too, on that last stop. But unlike the 18, it worked. It made this car better. Now, remember, Joey was in victory lane, won the million-dollar all-star prize a week ago. Well, he's hungry to get back there. You see the guy on the right? That's Brian Wilson. He's a new crew chief on this team this year. This 22 team has yet to win. He wants to prove he's capable of leading these guys to a win. And Joey Logano wants to be the man. And when you consider how great they have been in recent years, Jamie, hard to believe we're at race 11 and that team is yet to find victory lane. Last year when they ran both the cars was at Watkins Glen and yep. they took the first two spots. One, this is two. the first time since then they've done that and they're one three right now. So the team has made so much progress out, Adam. We've been up here every week thinking about how how they could have gotten off. They were just simply off when the season started. They've corrected that now. Brendan Gaughan, 15th, going in the wrong direction here, Chris. And boy, just about 50 laps ago, Brendan Gaughan was saying he was having a great time on the racetrack. Thought he had the best car he's ever had at Charlotte. Just in the last couple of minutes, said, guys, the car way too loose. I think I've got a right rear tire going down. You can see it, too, Chris. He is slipping and sliding all over the place. That car is loose, and if it, if it did have a flat tire or a tire going down, it wouldn't surprise me any. Get to our window. How many more? That's what I was going to say. Like, uh, we're almost there. Two more. Yeah, they're, they're closing on being able All to go the here. distance. Big gap. You pit here, and you're in your window. It cycles through. Maybe it won't hurt you too bad. That's good heads up thinking, you know, on the driver's part. Is, is He's got his hands full. He's slipping and sliding. He's trying to keep it out of the fence, trying to keep from wrecking. And all the while, he had enough, uh, you know, thought process to think about pit windows and where he needed to be. He can limp it around there a couple more laps, hopefully. He's in the 16th spot. About a half a lap behind, so make the right adjustments, get the right caution. He can still climb back into this thing. When we went to that last break, I thought it was a, a foregone conclusion that Larson was going to take over the race lead. And, and he just kind of has hit a wall, couldn't get to Logano. And, and now it appears he's starting to move around on the track a little bit. Yeah, he's definitely moving around. I've been watching. It's right there at that, uh, you know, half a, half a second uh, window. He'll, he'll get to four tenths and then right, right back to, you know, to about a half. But uh, um, they're matching lap time for lap time right there. Any kind of traffic or anything like that coming up could be the difference, especially with him moving around and figuring that outside line out. When you're driving around with a beat up race car like Elliot Sadler is today, how good is that win at Talladega feel right yeah. now? <laughs> I'm going chasing boys. I know today's not That's what right. we hoped for, but we made sure we were going to be a part of the playoffs with our big win at Talladega. See that green car there coming into your picture bottom of the screen. That's Dakota Armstrong just went a lap down to Logano. That means Eric Jones, who was in the free pass position, no longer there. So the hopes of him getting back on the lead lap at least at this stage of the race have gone out the door. Yeah, those wins are so big, Michael. I mean, just you're exactly right. You know, he's not going to win this battle, but he's certainly going to be in a chance to win the war. Well, Clint, we've got it under that half second you were talking about. I think that's just a tenth or so there. And it was traffic, you know, and, and, and Larson five. being able to move around and, and maneuver and get that outside line working as they catch that All traffic. That's the difference maker. Larson. Inside, pulls up in front of Joey Logano, all clear. Kyle out front. All good about 15. 15 what? I, I don't know yeah. what he was talking about there. <laughs> 15 feet, I guess, maybe. <laughs> I would have assumed car lengths and probably be crashed right now. 
This but, is kind of a, a he, whoa, a little slip there for Logano. And it, that's why Larson's, you know, obviously uh, ran that outside line, got it figured out, come off straight and, and is fast. And you can see um, Joey's car really, you know, going away right there and getting loose. It's kind of a role reversal of what we saw late in the all-star race. That's Logano talking about where Larson's got him. Yeah, you we saw that right there. I mean, it was on display off of four in a big way. Last Saturday night, Logano passed Larson to get the million dollars. Today, Larson around Logano put the 42 on point with 51 laps to go. Forty-six laps to go at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the Xfinity Series, and it's been a long day for driver 42. Resilient would be a good word to describe Kyle Larson. Trouble been a theme for the driver today. Inside line on the restart, lap 42, Kyle Larson spins his tires. Bad restart there, loses two spots, then a lug nut issue. Lugnut gets hung in the tire. Changer makes a great decision to fix it. He'd lose 15 spots, but could have been much worse. That was at lap 55, lap 112. Watch the rear of the car. Oh, tire changer falls down while Kyle was leading the race. You see him on the ground there in pain. Kyle Larson would fall to third. 45 laps to go now. Green flag, Kyle Larson out in front, Larry. Yeah, we're probably going to see green flag stops, Danielle, here again in about 10 to 15 laps. So. Yeah, they're going to have to have their act together on pit road for that final stop. Adam, hopefully all mistakes out of the way for Kyle Larson and his team. Yeah, and you may remember last time he was out front Bristol Motor Speedway, led 94 laps, lost the race lead late on a restart. Here's Ty Dillon, scheduled green flag stop, Chris. 
Ty Dillon running around inside the top 10 most of today and all day long he's been saying I have a good car just don't have the speed of the leaders so no major changes there just looking for more speed out of the three and we'll see how this affects Ty Dillon but the caution comes out with him on pit road now timing and scoring right now shows him one lap down so he may have to take the wave around here and that's too bad for the driver that pitted early in this cycle. There's another driver that is going to look for a reset on this caution flag and restart and that'll be Eric Jones. He's gotten out of the free pass position and he'll need a break to get back in. What do you see here Larry? Well we know everyone's coming for four tires. We saw the up and down day that Kyle Larson has had on pit road. Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney, those two Tim Pitsky cars, their pit stops have been somewhere between 13 and a, 14 and a half seconds, but probably to no surprise, every time Denny Hamlin in that 18 car who's running fourth right now, every time he's been to pit road, in the 12 second bracket on pit stop. So that could be a big difference here. Well, and then what I'm looking forward to are the restarts. We've seen that be the game changer. Logano was able to jet around our front row and grab the lead on the last one. These guys know that it's you've got to hit these and you've got to hit them right if you want to go to victory lane. This is going to be a fun restart to watch. You mentioned Eric Jones. Free pass here to Garrett Smithley, who's 15th. How good has that kid done today? It's been impressive. He got, the, got up front when he stayed out under that caution in his number zero car there. Good looking ride hero box on the side of it. He's been wheeling that thing too. They've been three wide back there really battling it out. You know as well as I do Michael sometimes back there you're driving way harder than you are up front. Not sometimes usually all the time. I probably know that way better than you. But. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be driving hard all the time. <laughs> Money stop going to come with 41 laps to go. In honor of Memorial Day, Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with merging vets and players dedicated to ensuring our nation's warriors can be as productive off the field as they were on it by joining combat veterans with former athletes to form a common bond over dedication and teamwork. Visit foxsportssupports.com to learn more. No more mistakes this time, boys. It's pay windows open, it's go time. You go from the lead to 22nd here, you're not going to win this race. No, sir. I'm looking forward to seeing what Hamlin's got for them. You know, I, obviously that car didn't react to the adjustments they made. We'll see uh, if he can get that Gibbs car back up front where it's been most of the day. Yeah, they, th those cars were so equal during that last whole last run. We saw Blaney make a move around Hamlin and, and both the guys got around Denny, but then they just sort of stabilized there. So they're going to really lean on these pit crews when they come down, try to get that front row. So you got a shot to to take the lead on the start. Let's look at the top 10 here as we get set for these pit stops. Likely will be the last stops of the day. Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Austin Dillon, the top five. Then it's Cole Custer staying strong in six. Last time we came down pit road under green pit penalty for Brennan Poole, but he's come back to be seventh. Eighth right now, Justin Allgaier, Jeff Burton battling through adversity today is ninth and Brandon Jones, the rookie is 10th. And there you see the numbers for Denny Hamlin and what they've been able to do. So good today on pit road, going to need a good one here. Chris Neville, what's happening? Boy, this is the money stop for Kyle Larson's crew. We saw that problem on the right front, and then we saw the tire changer coming around the left rear, that slip on that last stop. So they've got to be perfect this time. Kyle Larson saying his car just a little bit tight firing off that last time. That's why he couldn't get by Joey Logano. So a slight air pressure change to the right rear. Jamie. Denny Hamlin says, I can catch him. I just can't pass him. He wants help on entry. They'll undo those changes. A four-tire stop. The 22 with Joey Logano needs more turns. Center off at three and four. Vince? If the 12 is going to make a run for this win, he's got to be freed up. So it's the track bar up and four tires for Ryan Blaney. Kyle Larson easily the first one off their road. He was the first one off. Joey Logano was second. Denny Hamlin picked up a spot, but looked like a tire got away. We'll wait on oh, if there's a no. penalty coming from NASCAR when we return to Charlotte Motor Speedway.
Next week, it's up to Long Pond, Pennsylvania and Pocono Raceway. It's the inaugural Xfinity race at the Tricky Triangle. Who lets their name as the first ever series winner here? Coverage begins at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Looking forward to that next weekend. First time ever for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Pocono Raceway. Kyle Busch will be back in the 18 car and a penalty for that team under this cycle of caution pit stops. Watch the tire backside of the race car. This is from NASCAR's Hawkeye system looking down on. Oh, and you can see the a bad bounce. Crew member was just diving to try to get that tire and it just bounced the wrong way. Like a bad hop in baseball. Tough break for him. Kyle Larson, race leader on the restart. What lane do you think I should pick? It's, it's hard not to say the top. I mean, the bottom lane's been spinning them most of the time. And the 22 took the lead from, what was it, fourth on that last restart. You know, he cleared you and then cut down and got the leader. So, I don't know, I mean, as, as long as I think you keep the pace up and take off right in the box, I, I don't see you being able to lose the lead at all. I agree with that comment. It's you just got to be the leader of the race. You got to set the standard. And as long as you do that, you should be able to beat them. What a blow for Denny Hamlin. Boy, just wasn't Joe Gibbs day, was it? All three of those cars with issues. Hamlin restarts 13th. Look at him try to spread out behind that front row. Larson making the inside lane work. Logano going to slide in behind him and Cole Custer rallying outside. Could he get up to third here? He's got a good push there. Austin Dillon up on the 88 car. Fake slow. <laughs> Brendan gone out of nowhere. Brendan Poole in the mix. Jeb Burton. What a mess Ooh. on the restart. Three wide. Look at Austin Dillon. He's going to try to peek to the inside of the 88. Can't do it. And gone looks to the outside. Brandon Jones a kiss off the wall. Ryan Sieg in the middle of this battle. Look at Sieg dive down into the first corner. You said it earlier, Clint, on a restart, the opportunity to go make up some ground. And it's hard to do that too, Adam. Your, your tires are down, there's, you know, squishy feeling, the car slides and slips around a little bit until they come up. Um, and I know, oh, by the way, you know, that's where you got to make the most hay. So it's, it's a difficult situation to be able to get up on the wheel and get the most out of the car and pass cars on a restart like that. I can guarantee you one thing at this point, Joey Logano is really getting on Kyle Larson's nerves. <laughs> <laughs> the other night in that same turn, he did the same thing to him and took the all-star victory away. And now he drives around him again. And here comes Denny Hamlin. I just looked up and saw him three wide on the outside. Now he's dipping down to the bottom. Boy, he's coming. About to get back in the top 10. Restart at 13th. But behind all the other cars, you drop to the tail. This 18 is fast for the final run. A little anger goes a long ways there. <laughs> He's going to look to the outside of Justin Algar, and that's Brandon Jones up ahead. And then there's Jeb Burton. That just shows you one of the fastest cars all day long, all weekend long, um, and really all season long is certainly, you know, able to prevail no matter what obstacles you put in his way. Not been an easy day for Brennan Poole, but here he is getting the sixth position from Brendan Gone. This kid gets it, man. He is doing a great job, gets better and better each week. That's a big pass there, moves him up solidly inside the top 10, up to the sixth spot. Denny Hamlin continues on the move. Eighth now. You know what he'd like? Couple caution. more laps, maybe a caution, tighten him up, and then he could really make a run. You at know, it. he did spin and won at uh, New Hampshire last year. That's a that's a, a good stat there, stat guy. He was waving that in my face. I got it in there for you, buddy. He, st he spun out and then went on to win the race, and so uh, had this issue on pit road. And like you said, Clint, when you're mad, you're going to go harder, and he knows it's time to go. You're going to have to do just that. I tell you who's happy is, uh, man, I'm telling you, Joey Logano is very happy right now. He's laying some big, fast laps down and is driving away from him right now. Saw there Jeb Burton climbing the mountain today. Michael mentioned his problems in qualifying, started dead last, has spent time in the top five, ninth, with 32 laps to go. Heck, I even mentioned his dad. I've, I've covered that <laughs> man. I've covered that young man from one end to the other today. Tell you what, Cole Custer, he's done a great job today. What a young young student of the sport, and, and uh, he's going to be around a long time. Running fourth, that's a big day for and him. And, you know, you say student of the game, and in the garage area yesterday, I ran into Elliott Sadler, and right beside him was Cole Custer. 
he was just trying to gain any knowledge, any experience that he could listen to of, of Elliot's was going to help him. Saw him a couple hours later, same thing. He, he wouldn't let Elliot get out of his sight. He just knows that's a, such a, a valuable wealth of information there that he was able to lean on. And now he finds himself, Vince, running in the top five. Well, that's right. That veteran to lean on has been key. But Kessler said it also helped him that last week when he ran the truck race here, it was on the same tire as what they're running here today in the Xfinity Series. And he also did get to test the Xfinity Series car here a couple of weeks ago. So those two factors certainly played a little bit of a role in helping him feel more comfortable. And then getting to the track and having that veteran to lead on, it's been a big difference maker. But don't take anything away from the way this kid's done it. He has done a heck of a job here today. And Dave Ellens, the crew chief, has given him something to work with. Yeah, and that truck race, Vince, was supposed to be on Friday night. They turned around and had it on Saturday during the during the sunny shine, the sunshine part of the day. And so he learned what it meant to slip and slide around here on Charlotte Motor Speedway, and he took advantage of that knowledge. Looks like he is fighting a little bit of tight condition. He's having a trouble, you know, a tough time keeping it on the bottom. Um, you know, quite as, as as good as Austin is right there. But uh, just a little patience right here, and he could get him a top five. That would be a huge day. And Joey Logano now starting to put some distance between himself and second place Kyle Larson, Chris. Well, Adam, prior to that last stop, I told you that Kyle Larson said his car was just a little bit too tight firing off. They made an air pressure adjustment on that last stop. He's still saying, guys, this car just way too tight early in the run. His crew chief, Mike Shiplett, said, don't worry, be patient. You got him once we got about 20 laps into the run, so you're going to get him when we have 10 to go. Austin Dillon making a late move here to get to fourth, picking the spot up from the aforementioned Cole Custer. And Cole Custer great today, but, Michael, let's go back to Richmond, made his debut. It basically threw out practice, no qualifying because of rain, limited track time, had to start deep and finish sixth. I think we knew then how good he was going to be at these kinds of cars. Yeah, the only thing that's been a bit surprising is that he hasn't been better in his truck. We thought he would be one of the championship guys winning races in the truck. That hasn't happened this year, but he certainly shows in the Xfinity car that he can wheel one of these NASCAR stockers. What do you see, Jamie? Well, Brendan Poole, you know, he's finished top 10 the last three races, and he's carrying that momentum right now as the 18 is breathing down his neck. But Brendan has been happy with the car, and he, too, watched video of the truck race last Saturday and told me that helped him tremendously. He watched that entire race, watched what the cars did in the heat of the day, and it's helped him here today. I just got a note from the 48 that said the balance is money. Trying to make a move on Cole Custer, and as he does that, high lane, Denny Hamlin continues to move forward, 25 to go. He is definitely picking him up and putting him down, and he's going to get into the top five, I would say, but I, unless he has a caution or some help here, I don't think he can ever catch those front two. If he can get around the 88 and then get the caution, he'd be in a, a great spot. Restarting in the top five, just wonder, though, how much good would be left in the tires? Because he's burned them up pretty good passing all these cars since the restart. How about let's squeeze it three wide? <laughs> wow, that was aggressive, not only for Hamlin, but also for Poole just to hang it in there. He's not going to be intimidated by the cups, Sprint Cup star that's down on his bottom. He was in the good line. <laughs> he was the one I was nervous about. We saw Denny make a move at Kansas. Some, some, <laughs> I was just going to say that. Somewhat <laughs> similar to that one, and it didn't work out so well. I'm sure Brandon saw that, too. <laughs> Good day of racing. Yeah. You know, when you come up here, you never know what to expect on a hot, slick day. Those of you that needed another drinking <laughs> phrase, <laughs> refreshment. Uh, you never know what to expect when you come here. We've seen it all. We've seen long green flag runs and, and, and certainly have seen a lot of carnage and a lot of action early. Uh, it's been a fun day up here. Yeah, I would recommend if you were playing that drinking game, you were drinking Diet Coke. Because <laughs> it it, it could have gotten ugly early if, not that, if that's not the, the case. Cooler is probably empty 25 <laughs> laps in. And a reminder coming up next, men's soccer on FS1, Mexico and Paraguay in international friendly play. It's when we wrap up from Charlotte Motor Speedway, 22 laps to go. It's race 11 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Joey Logano on point. His advantage over second place Kyle Larson, 1.1 seconds. Ryan Blaney is third. Austin Dillon, who swept the races here a year ago, is fourth. Cole Custer, first start for him 
Eric Charlotte riding in the fifth position. Denny Hamlin, who's led the most laps, but penalized on the last restart, finds himself sixth and trying to get fifth from Cole Custer here. Apron ahead, inside. All clear. Apron ahead, Experienced spotter Eddie DeHaan giving Cole Custer all the information he needs. He just, I think you could hear by DeHaan, just let that car go. He's faster than us right now. We got a nice gap behind him. Let's try to ride this baby out and get a great finish. Another sixth place run for Custer. Denny's got a fast race car, but time is running out, Jamie. It is, and you know, when Chris Gale, his crew chief, told him they had the penalty, all Denny said was, cool. It was almost like, okay, guys, watch this. He restarted 14th, and all they made was an air pressure adjustment on that last stop. But this car has come to life, and so has the driver now that he's cracked the top five. Guys, last time by, he ran a 30.76. Our leader ran a 31.04. That's three-tenths of a second faster than the fastest guy in town uh, prior to Hamlin coming to life here. Only problem is he's four and a half seconds behind. Ooh, really good. I think that was the rea clear. reaction to those lap times. <laughs> Look at that time, 30.66, even faster yet. Yeah, it's fast. This, Four tenths this of a second in the race, better. That's really fast. Yeah, that last lap you talked about is, is when he was in some traffic. Yeah. You know what he'd love to see? And mm -hmm. it Caution. Might be, might be fun for us to see as well. Keep fighting, man. Keep whipping it here. It's not over. We said it earlier, but it bears repeating. Last time Team Penske put two cars in an Xfinity Series race, Watkins Glen last year, they finished 1-2 with Joey Logano getting the victory and actually went on to get the weekend sweep at Watkins Glen. First time he'd ever done that in his career. Oh, Logano in some traffic That's here. Right. Slowed his momentum. And I noticed also that Larson has started to run up on the high side of the track and closing the gap there. You can see he's got a couple of lap cars between he and the leader, but. Narrowed that, it up almost three tenths right there. Yeah, that, that lap. gap is shrinking. That's something to be said about that outside line. As you get into traffic, you don't see a lot of guys wanting to be up there that are a lap down, and it enables you to really catch that leader and make some gains. So it's Memorial Day weekend. When you talk racing Memorial Day weekend, a couple of guys you always think of, Roger Penske, Chip Ganassi, their drivers wanting, running one, two, three here with 17, now 16 laps to go at Charlotte. It's a big weekend for both of them. Excited for them. Uh, they're racers. You know, you, you see Roger Penske, uh, he's such a class act. He's so respected. And every time you see him, you just, you feel good about yourself. You know what I mean? He's just a really cool guy. And uh, to be able to see him compete all these years and, and be able to keep it, compete against him is, is uh, it really is pretty much a, an honor. That last time by Larson by 10th over Logano. You can see it's down to just a handful of car links there. The captain going to drive the pace car for tomorrow's 100th Indianapolis 500 and certainly got some drivers that are capable of getting him to victory lane. Juan Pablo Montoya, who delivered last year. Elio Castroneves, who won the pit stop competition yesterday. Cars were good in qualifying for the Coke 600, so you know he can get it done here tomorrow evening. And Joey Logano out front with 15 to go in the Xfinity race as we watch this battle for 10th. Brendan gone, Jeb Burton. And remember, guys, what happened to Hamlin earlier when Larson closed running the high lane, Hamlin was running the bottom. He didn't move up in time to take that lane away from him. If Larson gets something going on here, and you can see he's making a lot of ground there on the high side, that will force Logano to move up in order you, to protect that line. I'll tell you what I saw is, is I see Logano's car starting to slip, you know, and slide around like it was before when, when Larson caught him. So this is going to be interesting. Larson on that outside line right there, it's got him there, what, twice already today. Maybe it can do it again. How good would it feel for him to <laughs> track down Joey Logano and put the move on him late in this race, just like Logano did to Larson last weekend? It's just like his crew chief told him, though. Just be patient. You're going to run him back down. That's such a great feeling when you start to see that leader starting to slip and slide around and you start grinning from ear to ear. Hamlin now fourth as he goes around Austin Dillon. 
He's within four seconds of the race lead. If they battle it all, it could open the door for the 18 to be back in the game, but we're closing on 10 laps to go. Yeah, Hamlin definitely has Ryan Blaney, who's up in that third spot in his sights as they come off turn two. You can see there's Blaney and then Hamlin. I just like this 42 story of, of Kyle Larson. He's going to run down Logano. He'll get him. Nice and smooth. He took a million dollars from him last weekend. 31 21. It's just a matter of time here. Watch that difference. Just right around six tenths of a second. You know what I love about this Xfinity series, especially with these cup regulars like this, there's nothing to lose. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> promise you that guy at a 42 is going for it. Top five in the running order. All drivers that will compete here today and run 600 miles tomorrow. 900 miles for the weekend, like driving from here to Dallas, Texas. And Larson about as close to the yellow paint as you can get down the back straightaway and coming back to see nine laps to go and lap traffic ahead. Look at that momentum. Look and at that look run. Look at Joey Logano blocking. Logano says, all right, I didn't want to do this. Forced it. It forced Kyle to move down just his line a little bit. He couldn't ride the wall all the way up off the corner like he wanted to. And he lost a little time there. Around the 28 of Dakota Armstrong. I tell you what, he didn't lose near as much as Joey Logano. 31-28 to a 31-10 last time for Larson. See the stat there. Last time this 22 car went to victory lane. Last fall at Texas, courtesy Brad Keselowski. They won seven times last year, but yet to experience victory lane in 2016. Can Joey Logano finish the deal or will it be heartbreak courtesy of Kyle Larson? Eight laps to go. And just think about what Larson is doing. Not only is he trying to run down Joey Logano with his whole heart, he's doing it a, just a couple of inches off that outside wall, trying to balance what he needs to see out the windshield to, to what's going on out to his right. Huge oh. run off the turn two right there. Incredible momentum off the corner. Larson high again. Logano painting the white line. We got a handful of lap cars coming up too. It's going to make this really, really interesting in the next lap or two. Larson goes to the bottom. Inside this time for Kyle Larson. Turn one, 42, around the 22. Can he clear him? He's got loose. He's trying to roll back up here. Still got it by half. He's going to roll up here. Well, up clear. He's going back out of line. Still clear in line. Up here, bumper pushing. Out of line, down bottom, inside bumper, clear. <laughs> Logano, the bump, Larson hangs on. Here we come off of turn four, six to go You're this time. Be out there, you see what you got here. Lap traffic outside. in a big wow. way coming up. Still out there. How awesome is this? Side by side. Oh. We're going to get five to go and lap cars everywhere. Larson <laughs> now clear of Logano. It doesn't get much better than that. That's good racing. Now what's Logano do to reel him back to here? Anything and everything he can do. <laughs> and Denny Hamlin's thinking, go get him, Brad. Go yeah. get him, Joey Logano, because I'm coming. Hamlin's around Blaney. He's up to third. And there are some lap cars in front of these guys. They're going to have to work hard down the stretch. This is where you're screaming at your spotter. Yeah, I didn't tell him to get out of the way. Look at the momentum down on the bottom. Oh, problems for Blaney. Blaney's off the pace. Tire down. Could it bring out a caution? Not yet. He's down off the racing surface. Should be OK. Four to go as Larson crosses the start finish line. The flagman has the caution in his hand, but he hasn't thrown it yet. And Logano hasn't thrown the flag in either. He's he's still after Larson. Man, Larson's crew chief, he called it. I mean, he just told him to be patient. You're going to get him with about 10 to go. And I'll be darned, it was really close to what he, exactly what he said. And if we got a caution right now, it would mean overtime because three laps to go as Larson comes by the start finish line. I, just, I love these competitors. Look at what Larson did, the heart, the passion that he drove that car with, running just inches off the wall, trying to run down Joey Logano. 
But being smart, being patient, listening to that crew chief, and, and he was spot on. That's exactly right. He took advantage of his strong suit, and that was a long run. And now he's able to move off that wall. Yeah, I might tell him, man, just just get come off of it a little me, bit. Give me a foot. Yeah. You know, just a foot. A couple inches is making me nervous. Oh, and there is the caution. Watch the in the middle. Yep, go figure. Go figure. Eric Jones with a blown tire, it looks like. He, uh, serious contact in the outside wall. Oh, Mike Shiplett, crew chief for Kyle Larson. Three quarters of a lap to oh. see the white flag, and they could have brought it home, and now going to have to go through an overtime session. Now he doesn't not only have to hold off Logano, he's got to hold off Hamlin. Right front tire goes down, and that NASCAR, don't say anything about them throwing the caution negatively there. They had yeah, to throw to. the caution. Look at the violent crash that Eric Jones had. Caution's out. And Larry McReynolds, what do we do now? Well, we know we're, we're going to run possibly two laps. Of course, we do have the overtime line. Michael, these guys have 34 laps on their tires. Absolutely fresh tires is going to eat their lunch. But the box, I think that if you look at Larson and Logano, you know what? I don't know how you pit, but think about Larson, Logano, Hamlin, Austin, Dillon. They run this series for one thing, to win races. It's not about a points day. And, and factoring okay. into that 14 cars on the lead lap here. Well, hold on, Creechie. You're right. So what's going to win the race? Tires are <laughs> saying out. I think you come get four tires. 34 laps to even go two laps. I think that's like like taking a knife to a gunfight. I just think if you're if you're Ward Burton, if you're Ward's not out there, <laughs> Ward's not out there. If you're Jeff Burton, if you're some of those guys in the back part of that top ten, top ten, you got to take a chance. You got to stay out of these guys' pit. What is the 18 car going to do? Let's listen. They're waving the white up here with the yellow. Yeah, we were in turn two whenever the caution came out. Yeah, they've got to reverse that. He was not to the overtime line. Or, uh, he wasn't anything that's, that's wrong. Yeah, we, we were coming back around to get the white flag, and I saw the flagman with the white flag and the yellow, but but we hadn't come close to getting the white flag yet. No, I think he was just, he was ready to throw the white flag and looked up, and, and <laughs> the 20 car was in the fence. He had to yeah. grab the caution real fast. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just telling you what, I, I, you know, we saw the lineup get mixed up early in the race when some of the cars took mm -hmm. a chance to gain that track position. You've got Jeb Burton, Ryan Sieg, Brandon Jones, these guys, they've got to take a chance. If our leaders come to pit road, they got to stay out, and we're going to have a heck of a restart. But Michael, you're, you're spot on. How many times have we seen this in Sprint coming at Xfinity? All those guys back there, probably like Brennan Poole, Cole Custer, Algar, Ty Dillon, they're waiting to see what the leader's going to do. They're going to do opposite of that leader, absolutely. I think I'm going to make a call, and I'm, I'm 0 for 1, Boyer, but if I'm Kyle Larson, I'm staying out. I think we're going to get enough cars behind us to stay that I can win this race. What do you want, friend? Boy, I want to win, and I don't know. I, I'm afraid if, you know, you're just going to have to watch the mirror and, and make a quick decision as best you can. Pit road is open. Uh, Adam, you make a call then. I want somebody to make a call. You know they're going to do whatever you don't do. Larson stays out. Logano thinks about it. Shot fake from him. Denny, Denny Hamlin, Hamlin going to make Austin a pit stop. Dillon. Brennan Poole among the drivers coming down pit road. Cole Custer. Oh, boy, is this going to be a fun restart at overtime. Could be a huge upset in the making right here. Here's the 18, Jamie. Denny Hamlin raced his way from 14th up to third. They said they would do the opposite of the front runners, and they did. A four-tire stop for the 18, Vince. The two-car of Austin Dillon calling for a two-tire change, a little air pressure adjustment, some tape on the grill. He said, I need to take off better if I'm going to have a chance to win. Bunch of cars get two and get out ahead of Hamlin. Austin Dillon. Man. Justin Allgaier, Cole Custer. I'm afraid the old staying out for the front twos. They're in trouble. <laughs> 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 this is good. I am happy. We're going to see a heck of a finish, Larry McReynolds. Well, guys, when I look at Larson and Logano up there, and as I mentioned, 34 laps on their tires, and I know this is a different division, different circumstances, different tire, but I think about Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch at the end of that all-star race. They led from the start-finish line to about turn one on those 20-lap tires versus fresh tires. 
So we get overtime, third time this year for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. There's the overtime line. It's a two-lap shootout. Once the race leader gets to that overtime line, if he does that before the caution comes out, and then the caution comes out, this race is going to be over. We freeze the field, and as long as you can maintain speed, get back to the checkers, that's where you will finish. But if the caution comes out before the race leader gets to the overtime line, we rack them and do it again, and we can do it as many times as we need to get a clean finish. I want to say uh, something about my strategy of staying out like we saw Kyle Larson in Logano do. I thought that some of those back back of the top 10 cars would have stayed also and tried to just grab a better finish than they could have by, by pitting, but all of them elected to come pit, come to pit road. There's going to be fresh tires right behind our two leaders, and that's not going to be good for them. So Larson and Logano stay out. Last time they pitted lap 160, so their tires have got north of 40 laps on them. Then you got Austin Dillon, Justin Allgaier, Cole Custer. They all pitted, got right side tires. The first one on four fresh ones, Denny Hamlin, who will restart sixth here. Step four, we're the only two, copy. Well, here we go, it'll be fun. We're gonna <laughs> get it, we're gonna be all right. <laughs> That is awesome because well, I would I, I would have figured he'd say well we're in trouble boys but he's he's got to be optimistic fun. about it be positive <laughs> but uh, you know Denny Hamlin on them four tires if you were want if you were gonna want to be in a place that sixth position on the outside where you can get three wide and have that available option out there on a restart is gonna be key and Hamlin has driven himself right back into contention. That's how he got those four tires because Clint, we said he restarted 14th, but he was behind the lap down cars. He had to pass 20 some cars to get up to third, which is where he pitted from. And now he's gonna find himself in row three on the outside with fresh tires. That's a heck of a drive by that young man. He's still got a lot of cars to pass to get to the win. Austin Dillon on two tires right there. Um, he's sitting in, in, a, in a good spot, but it's just gonna be interesting to see what kind of jump Larson and Logano can get and how they get through turns one and two. I think that's going to be the key. One more decision for Larson. Inside or outside, looks like it's going to be the inside lane for the 42. Yeah, that's how he made the move on our leader. Remember, Logano kind of went up to block Logano's line and excuse me, block, block Larson's line. Larson dove to the bottom, made it work down there. On old tires, it, from my experience here, you seem to be able to get a hold of the track a little bit better on the bottom uh, and keep from spinning the tires, so I like that decision. My heart's beat. So let's go back. Look at what happened. I mean, this was a, a great dogfight down the stretch. It looked like Larson was going to get it. Logano said, I want some of that. <laughs> then the crossover move, Larson retakes the lead. And, and it looked like Larson was going to drive away. W once he finally got in front of him, I think it was over. And, and then this, the Eight. caution. Eighth one of the day, and now overtime. Not over. This day is ending a whole lot like it started. Chaos. That guy's going to need a beer after the race. <laughs> Mike Shiplett thought they had that victory in their hands. What they need, a half a lap? They'd be celebrating with confetti and champagne. Well, we got a little work to do, guys. All different tire strategies. This is going to be something. Keep an eye on that overtime line. Overtime brought to you by Credit One Bank. Larson, Logano, green flag at Charlotte. Denny Hamlin. Hamlin's looking to the outside like I'd look for him to. He got those he four clears tires. these guys right here. This could be a race when it moves. Logano around Larson. Dillon's right there as well. Hamlin's going to shove Larson across the overtime line. Caution comes out now, and that would end it. Back to the white flag. Hamlin through the middle. He has Logano in his sights. Hamlin to second. Logano leads at the white flag. 22 team Looking has the outside. it all year. 18 team unbeaten when it comes to mile and a half. Denny Hamlin outside looking for the lead off of turn two. Give it to him. Here comes Kyle Larson with a big run up on Hamlin. Was there contact with Larson Logano? It was close. Hamlin, you better block. Whoa. Larson looking to the inside. Boy, now he the tries. Outside. Momentum is gone. Larson in the wall. Denny Hamlin going to drive away. Checkered flag. Hamlin wins it at Charlotte. What a race. What a finish. That was special. Big.
Congratulations, buddy. That was impressive. Awesome, awesome, awesome job. Way to will it, bud. Way to will it. What about Denny's comment? Yes, sir. Nice work, guys. Chris, good job, bud. Nice car all week, bud. Proud to drive for you. What about Hamlin's comment after the pit road penalty? Cool. We're going to go get us some. And he drove all the way from the back to the front to get the win. You don't think that was a, a, a you, do you really believe that that was an honest cool or like a smart aleck cool? It was a cool. Y'all watch this. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. It was I, a frustrating cool. I told it you. ended up being cool. I told you midway through the race, it's going to be one of those y'all watch this moments. Man, I feel bad for Kyle Larson. <laughs> Seventh one of the That's year for Joe burnout. Gibbs Racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Fifth time they've done it with the 18 team. And for Denny Hamlin, 15th victory in his NASCAR Xfinity Series career. What a day at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And for Denny Hamlin, there was no way to hold him back. He would not be denied. <laughs> you know, but they, those leaders, they did everything they could, even to the point where Larson gathered it up somehow and made a run at Hamlin on that last lap. Well, he found that outside line that's been good for him all day long. But, man, those tires prevailed in the end. What a day. <laughs> yeah, we had a great time. So we're going to send it down to Victory Lane. But uh, before we do that, we got to say thank you for being here, Clint. Third time you've been with us in 2016. We always have fun when you're in the booth. Thanks, guys. Uh, this is fun, but it's it's nerve-wracking up here. I'm ready to try my hand tomorrow for 600 miles yeah, on this baby. 600 miles, four hours or so. You ready? 600 miles. Good thing you got the right sponsor for Five this. Five-hour energy. There you go. You're going to need it. Hey, hydrate tonight, okay? You need plenty yes. of water in your system. Thank you, guys. Before we go to uh, Victory Lane with Denny Hamlin, let's hear from Chris Neville. Well, heartbreak and frustration from Kyle Larson. Kyle, what a day for you guys. You you fought back after problems in pit lane, got the car back out front, but boy, that caution came out the wrong time there. With those cars on uh, new tires, did you really have any chance there on that final restart? <clears throat> no, I don't think so. Uh, I didn't get the great takeoff, and Joey got around me, uh, sucking on my door, and um, Denny gave me a huge shot, and uh, I was surprised at how much grip I had, actually, but... Uh, it's pretty hard to beat four tires uh, when you run almost 40 laps on your tires. So, uh, hated that we didn't win, but uh, proud of everybody on this uh, team for getting the Enio Chevy uh, a lot better than where we were in practice. So, uh, disappointed, but used to it by now. Thanks, Kyle. Vince. Denny Hamlin. Winning at Charlotte. His first Xfinity Series race of the year and he takes it to victory lane. <laughs> he stood up on the car and it started moving. He, he wasn't done racing yet. How did you do it? You had to go to the back after the penalty. You race your way to the front. You guys came for tires again at the end. What's going through your mind as you're passing all those cars? Well, it was the second opportunity. Obviously, uh, we I was hoping for that caution there at the end. We got it and uh, we were able to get four tires on this high sense Camry and took off. But uh, a little closer than what I thought. I mean, we were just really tight those last couple laps, but uh, man, what a what a great day. It's high since 300 here at Charlotte. Couldn't be prouder of that whole group uh, being here with Gibbs and me. And uh, we've been in victory lane with them a bunch, but uh, got to thank all my partners, Coca-Cola on Coca-Cola 600 weekend, Memorial Day. Got to thank all the troops for everything they do, those that have served and uh, those that are serving. Uh, Coca-Cola, Toyota, the Jordan brand, uh, the Greenbrier Resort, just uh, it takes so much effort to uh, to get in these things, and I love coming in these things, and now I know why uh, Kyle wins all the time. This thing's easy. <laughs> you made it look easy. Denny Hamblin wins at Charlotte. Joey Logano stays out on old tires. What's your takeaway after all of that, Joey? I thought that was kind of supposed to be like what the All-Star Race was supposed to be with old tires and new tires and all that, but uh, man, just count tire Ford was uh, the fastest it's been all year, so we can't hold our heads down about it. We had a car that was capable of winning the circumstances went right, and uh, I felt like I was going to have a good restart next to Kyle. I thought my restarts were a little better than his all day, and I thought, okay, if I can clear him, which we did, I was like, all right, we got a shot. But, uh, I mean, it was really hard to hold off those four tires. And um, but what a fun race. It got really exciting there at the end. And uh, uh, I got past on the top to Denny, and then Kyle 
just kept ripping up top and it had a big run into the corner. So it's fun to watch that. I was hoping they would get into each other and I would sneak one out. But um, overall, like I said, we're proud, I'm proud of what this team's done to uh, um, get faster. Both the, the 12 and, and the 22 have gotten a lot faster here. So um, good progress. Still a ways to go for sure. But, um, you know, we're making forward momentum. Well, we're going to double that tomorrow night. So we'll watch Joey Logano go for it again, Danielle. Yeah, 900 miles total for Joey Logano this weekend. And for the winner, Denny Hamlin, top three finishers, Hamlin, Austin Dillon, Joey Logano, cup drivers here today. But Hamlin taking four tires there at the end, Larry, to get it done. He's here for one thing, to win the race. I do not envy the calls, especially Mike Shiplett with Kyle Larson and Brian Wilson with Joey Logano, the call they had to make. It's almost like whatever they did, everyone else was going to do opposite. That's exactly what happened. The fifth win this season for the 18 car alone at Joe Gibbs Racing. Seven total for the organization this year. Yeah, I mean, that's the talk in both garage areas. What are we going to do to stop Joe Gibbs Racing? But I want to give a call to Cole Custer for that top five finish in that 88 car. Good run for him. Very impressive for that young man at Junior Motorsports. But it's the familiar Joe Gibbs Racing in victory lane once again, this time at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Hope you join us tomorrow for the Coke 600. Coming up next, we go to Atlanta to watch Paraguay continue the battle with Mexico and the men's soccer international friendly. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.